Let no flesh glory in your presence. Let no flesh glory in your presence. Let no flesh glory in your presence. Come on, where are the ones, the repentant ones? I heard the Lord say that I am calling those, oh yes, who've been hiding to the place of repentance. And you will publicly share your testimony. For surely the Lord says, I have come for those. Hey, hey, hey I have come for those who are okay with secrets. I'm going to tell you when personal revival is going to break out. When you begin to unveil yourself. When you begin to unveil yourself. When you begin to unclothe yourself in the presence of God. The Lord says, no flesh can glory into your presence. No flesh can glory in his presence. Come on, baby, be of us satire. The Lord says that we're coming into the place where there will be a revival of testimonies where people will begin to cry out and be broken before him. Where are you? Where are you? Cry out unto your father. Cry out unto your father. Brokenness. Brokenness. Broken heart. Contrite spirit. Broken 
heart. There it is. That's the sound that is coming up. There is a sound that is becoming up. There is a sound coming up from your spirit. From your spirit. From your spirit. We break the spirit of pretense. We break the spirit of pretense. God, we come into the place of glory where there is no shame. Come on. God. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Release it. Release it. Release it. Release it. Pour it out. Pour it out. Pour it out. Pour it out. Let the fear of God hit this room. Pour it out. 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 Say, Boso. Shahati Vahota Baka. Sata Baha Bata Come here. Put your hand on her back. That was a break of dark spirit off of her. Put your hand on her back. Come on. Cry out. Cry out. Cry out. Cry out. The amazing thing, keep crying out about the power of the blood. As it breaks the back of shame. If any person would bring their sin and their condition to the cross, surely he is just and able to forgive us of all of our unrighteousness. Take a moment. Empty yourselves. Here it comes. Katana nidi de behoto na behoto na mashata. That's it. Swaba da van de le behovo bashaha. Take a moment to empty yourselves. Empty yourselves. Empty yourself. Hey, hey, yeah. Shaha. Oh ho 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 Oh, 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 hear it, I feel, yeah, the fear of God is coming in the room now. Empty yourselves. Oh. It is only because of his mercy that we are not consumed. It is only because of his kindness that we have not been cast away. Oh, great God. Oh, great God. Oh, great God. It is only because of his mercy. Thank you for your grace. We understand our need of you, almighty God. Almighty God. Almighty God. Almighty God, Almighty God, Almighty God, Almighty God, Almighty God. We didn't come to perform, we come broken. Let me hear you talk to your Father. Talk to Him. Talk to Him. Talk to Him. Talk to him. You don't need fig leaves anymore. Everybody in this room, pour your heart out on him.
<laughs> More than anything, we need you, Jesus. More than anything. Your wounds don't scare him. That's it. It's beautiful in the years of God. It's beautiful. 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 we're there I want you to pray in tongues come on pray in the spirit bring it up just a bit son pray in the spirit come on come on come on come on and now that you've cleared your heart pray come on come on here it is you to pull your heart out every child should be crying out to God cry out cry out come up here tonight cry out hey kanda la bahra basa para bakata la bahanda la bakata boba so para be helele be koporo bo osha da la bahra bakata serebebe be koporo shata right there right there lift your hands baby cry out to him yes God is preserving you. The more you seek him, the more you'll find him. The more you seek him, the more you'll find him. There's no cap. There's no end to it. It's always a new revelation. 
It's always a deeper place. And that is birth through desperation. And that is birth through hunger. That is birth, sit right here, Alexis. That is birth, sit there on that step right there. That is birth by deep desire. That is birth through drowning out the noise. And disconnecting yourself from the opinion of man. And disconnecting yourself from what men think and how they perceive you and all of those things. There's some things you'll only be able to achieve in the presence of God. Some things you have to go after. You have to run forward. You have to be willing to look ridiculous. You have to be willing to say, I don't care what other people think. You have to be willing to lose friends. You have to be willing. Give her some tissue over here. You have to be willing. You have to be willing. You want to live in the presence of God? You have to be willing to lay it down. You want to live in the presence of God? You have to be willing to lay your life down. I will preach it to the mountaintop. There is no middle ground. There is no place of compromise. You are being called out of the place of indecision where you have one foot in and one foot out. You're standing in two kingdoms, but in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of God, you've got to be willing to lay your life down. You've got to ask God to give you the courage to lay it down. Hey, I feel that. You've got to ask him for the courage because many of you are afraid. You're afraid of losing. But you've not truly gained until you've lost. You've not truly gained until you've lost. And until you're willing to lose, you will never gain. Until you are willing to lose, you will never gain. He said, pick up your cross and follow me pick up your cross and follow me pick up your cross and follow me on an endless journey that leads to everlasting eternity with our father that leads us to a place oh, of everlasting joy of everlasting peace of triumph yes victorious living you want to please God lay your life down and my response is I'm willing to lay my life down for the sake of Christ there is nothing and no one more important than the king of my life the king of my story the king of kings and the lord of lords my most treasured possession he is mine and i am his forever and ever we'll live together in eternity oh it's more than a decision for today it's a decision for eternity what does it profit a man to gain the whole world Trish and lose his soul what does it profit a man to have earthly possessions and wealth and things and prominence and fame 
If you don't have Jesus, what does it profit a man to have pleasure in the flesh and still be disconnected from him? What does it profit a man to have a good feeling but still be separate from God? What does it profit a man? What does it profit you, my dear children, my dear friends, my dear ones, what does it profit you to have one foot in and one foot out? And when you stand before God, all that we have done, how we have lived will play before us. It's a story that our life will play before us. Then we give an account for how we lived the 70 plus years that we have been given. What will you say to the king when your life flashes before you? When every deed that you've ever done comes before your eyes, what do you say? Today is the day. Today is the day to surrender, give it all, give it all up, give it all up for the sake of Christ. Harden not your heart, the day of provocation. Today is the day. Somebody in this room, there's some people in this room that God is talking to. There's some people in this room that God is talking to. sound of my voice might want to testify at this moment. Anybody want to tell what God brought you out of? Anybody want to change their life today? Anybody want to tell what God brought you from? That's a real invitation. What he brought you out of, what you're giving up today. Anybody under the sound of my voice, it's a real invitation. You want to see your life change? You take the power from the enemy by telling your own story. For some of you, you're living in torment. You're living in torment. You're living in torment. You're living in torment because of your secrets, but you can tell it today. There's a place, there's a platform right here for you to tell your story. Hallelujah. Come up, come right here, turn and face. truth I can live in my identity my God-given identity I can just trust the people around me too thank you for creating 
creating a safe place. Anybody else before we move on? There is so much in this room, and I normally don't do this, but on, come on up here. I want to give you the opportunity to tell your story. You all got to be ready. Give her a mic. Yes. young age and living with that and I used I used heroin and cocaine for so many years trying to cover up all of that pain but not knowing that a lot of that pain grew up with me a lot of that sexual sin grew up with me because it was unaddressed and I'm now just starting to get over and being healed yeah. from, tell her, tell her. from pornography yeah. and masturbation. Yeah. And I thank God. I thank God for this woman right here. I thank God for you, Apostle. I thank God for the leadership that you placed in my life. I thank God for that. Because without you, I wouldn't be free. Without Jesus, I wouldn't be free. But without you and the accountability that you placed in my life, I thank you for that. Come on, somebody thank God for Jesus. Is there anybody else that wants to testify? Let me tell you something. True liberty will hit your life when you tell your story. True liberty will hit your life when you tell your story. Yeah, some of your heart is pounding right now because God's trying to deliver you from what you've been keeping a secret. That's right, get the microphone. You've been keeping it a secret and God says, I want to deliver you. Tell your story, babe. Um, my mom did the best she could. But the best she could wasn't always the best thing to do. Um, I was not protected as a child. I was molested and abused. One time I was beat so badly that I had to put raw steak meat and frozen peas and cold things to make the bruises go away. I couldn't go to school. And for a very long time, I've been struggling to love my mother because I don't like her. I've only tolerated her. And I don't want to continue to carry that guilt or that rage. I've been very angry, like very volatile since I've been a child, very anxious, very afraid of people, very afraid of letting people close to me. But today I'm laying that down. I forgive my mother and I forgive myself. And I forgive myself for questioning God. And I'm gonna allow people to love me the way that God intended for them to instead of running and pushing people away. Come on, Jesus, it loves you. He loves each and every one of us. Some of you have been bound in sexual sin and you've been in secret. 
Come on, some people have been in here, you've been in masturbation and fornication. I see it and I sense it very strongly. And God wants to bring you out of it. And you, your heart is pounding now. I want to invite you to come to the front. I want you to invite, this is a New Testament move. It's a model. I want to invite you to come to the front and testify. and spirit has been delivered. I was devastated that that, that that could be what was in me. And I swore, I just thought I would never, never go back to fornication. But I fell this past Friday. slept with somebody after drinking and everything that I was going to give up. I thought that I would shake it off, but God, he knows what we need. Because I was going to come in here and go home and just try to feel like I picked back up where I left off. But if it weren't for Apostle, if it weren't for my church, if it weren't for Jesus, I wouldn't be confessing my sins and repenting. But I just want to say before the Lord that my heart is sorrow and it's not shame, but it's it's conviction. And I know you all have also heard me testify about perfectionism and things like that. And I'm really tired. I'm really tired. <laughs> to be perfect anymore. I want to be honest about the fact that I need Jesus and I need him in a real way. I need him in a way that's transformative because say Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am struggling. Hold slender. <laughs> I am falling, struggling. I keep falling. But today. But today. I repent. I repent of my sin. Of my sin. You said. You said. I will come to you. I will come to you. You would not cast me away. <laughs> you would not cast me away. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. For forgiving me. Forgive myself. <laughs> Forgive myself. Father. Father. Fill me. Fill me. With fire. With fire. There you go. Come on. All oh, the blood of Jesus. All oh, the blood. Somebody sing it for me. Of Jesus. It washes. Why? As snow. Oh, sing. The blood sing, baby. Of Jesus. Woo! I'm singing, oh, 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 the blood of Jesus. Sing it, oh.
Anybody else who want to come up and testify? Hold the blood. Hold Don't wait for me to call you. Blood. Just come up. Yeah. Hold the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Sing it out. Hold the blood of Jesus. We sing it out. the blood. Hold the blood. Hold the blood. Hold the blood. Hold the blood of Jesus. It was. Tell us your story, baby. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Just last week, um, I came out from the hospital after attempting suicide. My God. Because um, even though I would come to church and I grew up in church, mm -hmm. I, I, it's so easy to pretend like everything is okay. Yes, ma'am. And to pretend like you're not caring, shame. From being assaulted in churches. From selling my body. <laughs> being addicted. For a long time, I was trying to make up for all the bad that I did. And it came to a point where I realized that there was nothing I could do to make up for what I did. And I told God, I told God that I needed a second chance. I said, I said, if you love me, just give me a second chance. Yeah. <laughs> because I couldn't do anything to make, to make up for all the bad that I did behind closed doors. The amazing thing about God is you don't have to make up for it. <laughs> The blood is more powerful than anything that you could ever do. One perfect man died on the cross for you. Say, Father. See, he's meeting you like he met the woman at the well. Yes, he is. I see the picture of it. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, say it. I receive you. Thank you for being the perfect lamb. The lamb that takes away my sins. Yes. Takes away addiction. Takes away fornication. Takes away promiscuity. Takes away offense. Takes away all pain. He's perfect. Say, I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Now be filled with fire. Baptize her with fire, Lord. She never goes back. He's a God of a second chance. He's a God of the second chance. He's a God of the third and the fourth and the fifth chance. Do you know it? He's a God of a second chance. Y'all don't know the most, huh? 
sing it over her. And everyone All of my wrong, forgive me and make me strong. Oh, save me. Sing it. Restore my joy for you're the God of a second change. Come on, baby. Hey. try to resist it as much as possible. It will feel so powerful to resist it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't at any time when I I've done it and stuff so hurt disappointed her sitting there praying her I, I wanted to go yeah I, I wanted to start praying in there and you had to tell me yeah. I couldn't just get myself say fuck it um, I've come to the end of myself I, the end of myself. I disappointed them but I'm more afraid of disappointing you I've disappointed them but I'm more afraid of disappointing you. Forgive me. Forgive me. Of my sin. Of my sins. Deliver me. Deliver me. From my sin. From my sin. From everything generational that has had me bound. I submit it to you. And I shut the door. Come on. That's right, baby. Come on. I shut the door today. In Jesus' name. Because this thing has been coming after your call. And you've been very well aware of what you've been called to do. But you've been so bound. But in the name of Jesus, the Lord says, because you tell your own story, he's going to break the yoke. Come on. That heavy yoke that's been around your neck. Break now. Break. 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 Say, Father, I receive your grace and the power to overcome it. And the power to overcome it. And the power to overcome it. Now, here comes your supporters. Here comes your accountability. Come on. Come on. Open up your heart. That's it. It's okay to be broken before him. You're a forerunner for your generation. There are so many people that won't tell the truth in this age group. But let this be a sign 
that revival is coming to the youth. Celebrate, church. It's coming to the youth. Fire, beyond I'm God. Lehoto Shekata. with him y'all stay right around him if a cares gonna come labor with him he's ready he's ripe and ready come on come on come on come on yes 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 thank God for the blood thank God for the blood somebody thank him somebody thank him somebody thank him somebody thank him Somebody thank him. Hey, 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 hey. Somebody thank him. Thank him for the blood. It will never lose his power. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. He's a chain breaker. He's a chain breaker. He's a chain breaker. Chain breaker. Somebody say it. He's a chain breaker. Come on, tell us your story. From the age of 13, age of 25. Hold your mic up just a little bit. I had always had female problems. Mm -hmm. I had to have surgery at 25. Mm -hmm. My dad, when I told him what type of surgery I had, told me that no man would want Oh. So ever since then, I was married, my husband left, I couldn't hear my children. Mm-hmm. Come on, there's a fire, it's descending, descending on you right now. He's breaking the word curse. He's breaking the word curse. He's breaking the curse. He's going down into the root, into the root, to the root, to the root, to the root, to the root, and even to the family altar. It's broken. Break, 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 break. The name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, you must break. Come out of it. Come out. When you testify, you give God the access and permission to invade those spaces that have had you bound. It's done today. The fire of God burns the contract, burns the contract with your name on it. The fire of God burns it up. And I rebuke and bind the power of those words that have been looming over your life. 
You are not that. Today, your destiny is being released from heaven. What has been held up as a result of an evil covenant breaks today. Destroyed by the power of God. By the power of God. You get the glory, Jesus. You get the glory. 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 Take a deep breath and blow out, baby. Blow it out. So shit, it'll be undone, Jay. That's it. That's it. Don't, don't resist it. Don't resist it. Show baby undo lufu shoot to cool a manda la bahara bakata. Made a behunda la basadela de beto mandanda de kajele de bekoto. Za sabele de betunda de bekoto for the baton for the manda la bakata. Zana la bashoto for the bokoto of the popo. Jetele beto for the baton of the bokoto of Shata. Jan de le supo for the bandele de beton no to popo shakata. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, a new covenant. It's established. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Jesus. Oh God, thank you. I just want to say thank you to God. First and foremost, <clears throat> Apostle, when you said someone's heart is beating. <laughs> I know God was talking to me. <laughs> and even as I stand here, I know he's telling me today is the day. <laughs> today is the day. <gasps> you will tell your story. <laughs> Nobody else. I've had prophecies. I've had dreams. I've had so many different encounters. <laughs> I've repented for so many things that have happened in my life. <laughs> but I've never gotten the chance to open my mouth. For long as I can remember, I have been muzzled. My people, parents that were supposed to love me and protect me. And for so long, I've always known, since I'm fucking five years old, mm -hmm. that God was always with me. When I was five years old, I almost died in a fire. A fire that I caused. And it was my uncle who's passed on. He's been gone for years. He was in the house with me. And he saved me from that fire. <laughs> but I know it was God that protected me. I had my daughter at seven. Well, I was pregnant at 17. I had my daughter at 18. There was so much shame. So much shame. The devil told me I was done. He told me that my life would be nothing. But even then, I know God was with me. I know that God was protecting me. There's so many things. I can repent for so many things, and I will. Pornography, sexual sin, fornication, sex before marriage, idolatry. I tried weed once. It didn't work. But I tried it. <laughs> Choke to death. <laughs> I say that to say I inflicted a lot of things onto myself just knowing that I did not want God to use me. I wanted to be everything the enemy told me that I would become, but for some reason, God still protected me. <laughs> In 2020, when I decided to resign from my career, when I became pregnant with my twins in 2019, I remember being in the abortion clinic with my husband, okay? Mm -hmm. How do you go to an abortion clinic with your husband? Because the enemy told me that I didn't deserve to get pregnant again. I didn't deserve to have a family, that I could not handle the pressure. I was literally sitting in the abortion clinic. I, we paid the deposit. We saw the doctor, the doctor said, if we hear one heartbeat, would you like to know? I'm sorry, she said, if, you, if I hear more than one heartbeat, would you like for us to tell you? And I said, no, just let me know if there's one heartbeat. And of course, she told me there was a heartbeat and I still proceeded with wanting to get the procedure done. 
And at some moment, I was talking to the post-op person that helps you with counseling after the fact. I remember looking at her face, and all I saw was a witch. And when she looked at me, she started to stroke me and tell me that everything was going to be okay, but I saw the enemy. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and that moment, God whispered to me. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> He said to me, daughter, I've been with you <laughs> this entire time. Yeah. I've never left you. Yeah. I've got you through the worst of things. Childhood trauma, abandonment, rejection, abuse, physical, me mental, physical. I've gotten you through all of it. If you trust me today, I promise you, <laughs> you will never want for anything. Mm -hmm. I literally got up and I told her I'm not doing this today. Praise God. <laughs> and when I say she looked at me with so much disgust, she was disgusted with me. She as if I was gonna kill her baby. She was so disgusted with me. And I got out, I walked out of there, and my husband's sitting in the lobby. He's like, everything okay? I said, I, I'm not doing this. He's like, okay, let's go. And I'm like, well, I wish you would have said that before I got here. And he said to me, you know, I, I couldn't make the decision for you as your body. Only you can make that decision. I went to the registration desk. I told her that I'm not going forward with it. She told us they would charge us a fee. I said, no problem. And from that day, I, I, re I remember God continued to have encounters with me. And I believe that's when he, he, he continued just to remind me of who I was in him. I believe that moment, I was almost baptized again. I can't explain it, but I re know I rededicated myself that day. And even though that was a, a, a amazing story to tell, my twins are almost three years old and they're a blessing. <clears throat> but there are still, if I could be transparent, I'm still struggling. I'm in an area in a season where I don't know who I am. I've gone through so much of my life performing and being perfect and and you know, climbing the corporate ladder and, and getting degrees and being successful and having a new home built and having a brand new car and, and having so many things and none of that, even my marriage does not trump my relationship and what I need in this season with God. And I believe, I know that I'm called on behalf of my family and even though they're not where they need to be, I know that God is going to use me. But first and foremost, I want to be who I need to be. Mm -hmm. There's so many strongholds. I, I suffer from anger. I get extremely angry, extremely angry at times. I don't always feel like I'm the best mother. There's things I've done bad as a mother, as a stepmother, as a biological mother. And there's things that I either overcompensate with or I become too on the other side of things and I know that it's still trauma and things that I need to deal with. And today, I just want to be set free completely. <laughs> because I know God cannot use me if I'm not free. I don't want to be perfect, but I want to be free. <laughs> and it hurts because I feel alone. I feel like <clears throat> to choose God, as you said, that's one of my favorite scriptures, to pick up your cross and follow him. It's the hardest thing to do. It's so lonely. People think you're crazy. I done lost my mind. You done quit your job. You done did all these things. You lost your mind, but I know it's God calling me. <laughs> Father, for this peculiar one, this one that you have set, bring it up just a bit, Mom. This one that you have set aside for the appointed time that she's coming into. Father, we thank you right now. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I totally surrender my heart and soul to you. Deliver me from the deep regret. Deliver me from anger. Deliver me from abandonment. Now, God, I take authority over this threefold cord that is in operation in our life. And I rebuke the spirit of death. Come out. Out of her. Out of her. Out. Now. Come out. I rebuke the spirit of death. Death to her dreams. Death to her purpose. It entered in when you went into that abortion clinic. And although you didn't go through with it, it still grabbed a hold of you. Now. I command it to leave her and let her destiny be released now. God said, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they won't follow. And he didn't make you a wanderer. I break it off of you. So it had been your full shot time. 
That's right, baby. Take another deep breath. Blow out. Fire be upon a baptizer in the Holy Ghost. Con. It brings it to the place of undefilement and compromise. Let the spirit of Jeremiah be upon her in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I destroy every wicked covenant and word spoken in the name of Jesus from their mama and from the daddy. Come on, everything in the blood. Take a deep breath and blow it up right now. Go. Go. Jesus. Jesus. Pray with her. Come on. Who's next? Right there. Go on the line. Yeah. Let's go. Um, <clears throat> sorry. I really, um, I really battled with coming up here because I know that um, a lot of the shame and guilt I've experienced has been here too mm -hmm. at church. Um, and, you know, just growing up, I, um, I was abused and I was molested by my family members and my parents were alcoholics. <laughs> and sometimes I just didn't know if I was going to be safe in my own home. <laughs> And they were verbally abusive. And sometimes when we would drive places, I just didn't know if we were going to make it to and from the same, the place. And so I spent my entire adult life fighting all the words that I've heard my parents say. And I know that I still fight them now. And a few months ago, for months at a time, I was so disobedient to God. And I was sinning all because I felt safe in that place that I was at. And so I kept choosing to do that instead of choosing God because I just didn't believe that there could really be anything better for me. And so I repented and walked away and turned, but I know that I still fight all the time to not think that I'm everything that my parents and my abusers said that I was. Um, and so when I was in college, I remember um, I got saved when I was in about middle school and I remember uh, going to college and realizing that striving and being religious didn't work. So I remember making a covenant with the enemy and saying that I was going to do everything that I told the Lord that I wouldn't do. And so I started drinking and I was blacking out and I would not remember what happened the next morning and nobody would tell me what happened. And instead of seeking God, I would go and do yoga and I would talk to nature and talk to the trees and the sun just looking for guidance and looking for that level of peace that I now know can only be found in Jesus. But I didn't trust him enough with my heart to think that yeah. he was enough or that he was the only way. Say Father. Father. Today. Today. I publicly. I publicly. Break the covenant break the covenant with Satan. I know you've already with done Satan. it, but we're making a public announcement today because the Lord wants to make you an arrow and the enemy has used everything that you have come through against you. And so that's why you have not been able to break free. But today the power of God is now falling upon you. Come up, Robert, in the name of Jesus, bring it up. The power of God say, God, I receive all that you have from me. I denounce my affiliation and association with all witchcraft publicly. I denounce 
and renounce my affiliation, even connection with the words that were spoken over me. It was not your fault, baby, but in the name of Jesus, I send the power of God into your, into your mind, into the three compartments of your mind. I send the fire of God and I burn up every negative word spoken over you. And I replace it with the word of God that says you are his beloved. You are the apple of his eye. I break the power of shame and I release the power of the blood over you. In the name of Jesus, you are beautiful and you are worthy of the love that God intends for you to experience from him. I release now greater grace, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Sunday, I cast off every connection with everything that related to yoga and out of darkness in the name of Jesus. I destroy it. I destroy it. I destroy it. And I release the blood of Jesus Christ. I release it. I disconnect you from every association with the sun and with nature and with trees and all of those elements in the name of Jesus. And we form a more perfect covenant. A more perfect covenant that is made through the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. Say, God, I receive it. Come on. Say it. I receive it. God, I thank you now that it is entering into her body oh yes and she shall not be able to contain it what you are doing she will preach about she will teach about she will teach in the classrooms she will bring her enemy to an open shame and I decree that there shall be no backlash and there shall be oh yes no retaliation yeah I stand in the courtroom of heaven and father I thank you and legislate on behalf of her on behalf of every person under the sound of my voice father wherever there is an opening wherever there has been given the enemy access we pray now that the light of jesus christ will begin to reveal it father and even for this one god we thank you that you will begin to visit her visit her in dreams visit her in visions visit her visit her visit her set her life on fire and that part of her that seemed to be stagnant that seemed to not be moving God, we set an emotion now. Oh, in the name of, get down there with the elder Sandra, labor with the. Come on, somebody celebrate and thank God. Yes. 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 I grew up without my biological parents mm -hmm. um, since at the age of two. But my she got to stand before God by herself. There. Stand back here. I'm not pushing you as well as a husband. Let her testify, and then you embrace her. All right. So. He loves his wife. <laughs> but when y'all stand before God in heaven, yeah. ain't no gonna be no ain't gonna be no partners. <laughs> You can be brothers and sisters then. I know that makes some of y'all real sad, but oh you're going to love it then. You'll have no memory. Amen. Go ahead. So, um, <laughs> since I can remember, I'm sorry, no. <laughs> I have struggled with the confidence of being a mother. Oh. So, this last year, some of y'all know the personal testimony of my pregnancy but I had a miscarriage before Ariella so the pregnancy itself was hard and because everybody was happy and me I was struggling with being happy and just afraid that something else would happen um, so my confidence it's been something I just feel like I just can't get a grip of it sometimes. And um, so I just, I just really want to have that confidence that I know, that I feel in everything that I do. But sometimes it's, it's kind of hard. I feel like it goes back and forth. Um, so I think it is why it's been just hard to talk about it. I like to write or I can dance in that regards. 
Um, so I just really want to be confident in, in who I am. So everybody, shut your hands to what Amber. You finished your testimony. Father, in the name of Jesus, you know what Amber is in need of. Gotta go into her childhood. Yeah, take a deep breath. go into our childhood now and I ask you to heal those places heal those places that were broken and abandoned the areas that she missed out on give her the understanding supernaturally on how to lead her children in the name of Jesus I release confidence upon her I release great grace upon her come on you're going to find your confidence in the word I release it upon her in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I break the power. What is this? I break the power of postpartum depression. Now, let her go. Let her go. Y'all got to be quick with these claws. Let her go. Now, pick her back up. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God, Yeshua, the all-breasted one, I release the kingdom into her. Back up just a minute, Jermaine. I release the kingdom, which is righteousness, peace, and joy. I release it into her heart. I release it into her heart. Hey, but of our I don't want nobody behind her right now. You two just hold her. I just don't want nobody to hold her just for a moment. Stay right there near. In the name of Jesus, take a deep breath. Come on, it's about to leave you now. Take a deep breath and blow it out. Blow. Blow. Fire. Shaka. Now, y'all, I'm not doing one-on-one -on -one deliverance. This is not the purpose of this. You're going to testify. And if the Lord leads me, I'm going to do it as the Lord allows me. I just want to put that out there because I don't want that. No, it's not her. It's her right here. Stay in the order in which they came. So we're going down. And then we'll start back with her. Okay. <laughs> if you all, y'all come on this side for me. You three. Yeah. That way we can keep it in order. Thank you, Jesus. I didn't know I was going to come here today. Mm -hmm. I actually went to a different church. <laughs> but it was weird over there. <laughs> it was weird over there. <laughs> I love everything about that. At least she was able to see it, right? Jesus. <laughs> and my Christian group, who's here? Hey, y'all! Morgan in the house! <laughs> I love it. They were texting the group and said, who's coming to the father's house? And, and at first, I was like, mm -mm, like, I don't, I don't know yet. I don't know. But at this service, when I was like, oh, yeah, I don't want this service. I want to go to the father's house. I came. But this past weekend, oh, God. I broke up with darkness. Hey. 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 hey! Somebody rejoice in this house! Oh, 
I'm free. To I'm free. I'm free. I grew up alone. I grew up misunderstood. I grew up with nothing. I grew up in a culture that was just round darkness. And I realized Saturday I was surrounded by the light of my Christian org. And that I had to just say I'm done with darkness of 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 just feeling judged, of feeling a misunderstood, of confusion. I broke up with confusion. I broke up with And I just thank God because um, I did lose my father at 11. So I didn't have a male role model in my life. I didn't have uncles. I didn't have like male cousins. So I realized that God is my father. Yes, he is. is. I just, I thank God that I'm here because I did not, I was going to just be in my dorm room and just not come outside. I didn't want to come outside, but I'm here. <laughs> Dickens Phoebe, come and lead her through the plan of salvation, and then we're going to pray for her. Come on. Oh, I didn't see all the Sandra there. You want evangelism? We want to lead her through salvation. So that's when we're going to take her through the confessions. Yes. 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 Turn around and look at me. Lift your hands. Say, Father, now fill me with your Holy Spirit, with evidence of praying in tongues. I receive it. There we go. Come on. There we go. Come on. Show. Yes, there we go. Come on. Feel her now, Father. Do what you did for me. There we go. Take a deep breath. Look. And I let your tongue roll. Zeholama. Come on. Let your let your language come forth. Mahalatalaba Shatalabahova. Come on, let it come. Don't think through it. So, that's it. That's it. Keep praying, babe. I want to hear her just for a minute. No, pray in your heavenly language. She's not going to do it. Quite keep going. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you something. When you feel with the Holy Spirit, sometimes it doesn't, you, you think it's supposed to sound a certain way. But God just filled you. So I want you to release your tongues and keep going for about 10 minutes. Come on. Come on. Pray. And don't even overthink it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. Father, make her a great witness. Make her a great witness. Make her a witness. From corner to corner, city to city, put the word in her mouth. Yes. Come on, keep praying until you feel it. Come on, verse through. Hi. Yes. 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 Thank you. Okay. All right. Keep praying. Somebody keep praying with them. Take her to the side and just keep praying with her. Thank God she's filled. She got saved today and filled with the Holy Ghost. And filled with the Holy Ghost. 
and filled with the Holy Ghost and filled with the Holy Ghost when God began to tell me what he was going to do in, in these services I started thinking about a former season where I was concerned with people that were concerned with the clock and the Lord said if you would condition these people I will break out in the father's house and this is what we're seeing now we're being conditioned for something greater for something so supernatural come on in here aren't you grateful give God the glory so don't talk with them just pray in the spirit of the song that's all I want you to do yeah um, so I just want to start off by repenting to you apostle and pastor Corey because the story that I'm about to tell has really caused me not to trust you all with my heart um, in my life and my destiny and I love y'all immensely but there's a difference between love and trust um, and so I want to repent to you today for that because y'all didn't do anything to deserve that um, and my testimony is that I have actually lived through a lot of sexual abuse that I probably have not named until this moment wow. um, growing up I lived in a blended family and one of my siblings Told me I had a mastery when I was six. Oh. And I lived in a lot of shame because oh. another one of my siblings moved in with us um, after being removed from their home. They had been molested and they taught me how to do stuff with them that their abuser taught them how to do. And then I did that with some other neighborhood kids. And then when I was in my early 20s, my older brother, who I <laughs> had seen as a dad at times, when me and my dad weren't close, <laughs> he touched me in my sleep. <laughs> and when I told my parents, <laughs> they weren't as <laughs> supportive. And <laughs> my mom told me that I had to just <laughs> remember that he was a good person. <laughs> no. <laughs> and remember all the good that he did for me over the years. <laughs> and my dad, <laughs> he told me that he was <laughs> upset but it's his son and he still is gonna support him and so now my brother's home and I don't I don't live in the state with them anymore but a lot of my family members still talk to him and have a relationship with him and so I've been living in a lot of pain the past few years of just seeing him get to continue on with his life with the people I love who haven't supported me and I think my past has caused a lot of pain and mistrust of other people that could really pour into me and create healthy relationships where they won't abuse me. And um, I've been trying to get free of sexual sin of masturbation for a long time. And it's like I'll be free for you, for you years and then something happens and I'm not and then and then I'm not, and I'm just <laughs> tired of going through it. <laughs> and I just want all of it to be done. So that's my testimony. I'm still here today. We thank God that you're still here today. Yeah. Say, Father, Father in, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I break covenant, I break covenant with, the pain. with the pain. Father, Father as an act of my will, as an act of my I will, choose to forgive. I choose to Name your abusers. I choose to forgive. <laughs> I choose to forgive Katrina, and Anthony, and AJ. I choose to forgive my mom, and my dad, and my stepdad. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. So I release them. I release them into the freedom. Into the freedom of my forgiveness. Of my forgiveness. I release myself. I release myself from all woundedness. From wounded. All woundedness. Bitterness. Bitterness. And pain. Pain. Father. Father. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you for delivering me. Okay. Take a deep breath. Now, Father, I take authority over everything that has held her up that has kept her bound. And I command the spirit of abuse, the spirit of molestation, the spirit of bondage, 
the spirit of sexual perversion come out of her out of her I said she's broken contract she's broken contract release her now release her release her release her come on baby let it go take a deep breath blow it out All the pain lodged in her brain and her memories. Father, we command a spirit of memory recall to come out of her all brokenness and bondage. Come out, 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 come out. Don't hold it, baby. Come on. I see it. It's coming to the surface. Come out of there. Come out now in the name of Jesus. I command the trauma. Come out of there. Welcome to our 1159 service. First, I want you to do me a favor. Look to the person to your left, to the person to your right, or my left, your right, and say, share the live, okay? Have you shared the live? So for Facebook, we wanna make sure that you're liking and sharing the post for YouTube. Go ahead and press the share button, copy link, and be sure to send it to your family and friends. All right, on Saturday, March 4th at 10 a.m., we will be having our new partners class. Keep an eye out for an email for you to register. So to all of our new partners, don't forget our motto, life makes sense when you connect. So be sure to register for that class. I've got some exciting news. 10 a.m. prayer is back every other Sunday in March, starting Sunday, March 5th. So meet us in the sanctuary here at 10 a.m. We are gearing up for our three-part Sweet 16 extravaganza, which kicks off Friday, March 10th at 7 p.m., where we'll be having our 16th Ministry and History Celebration with special guest Bishop Jason Nelson. And on Saturday, we'll be having the Embassy All Around the World Met Gala. So we want you to represent any country of your choice and be prepared to talk about it. Tickets are $80 for adults, $50 for children, and you can register now on Eventbrite. The link is also available on our TFA website under events, so be sure to check it out. And drum roll, please. Be sure to register for the premier event of the year, It's a Card 2023. That's happening March 23rd through March 26th. Log on to issacard2023.com for more. Okay, so all my ladies in the place with style and grace, join Apostle Stiff in Cancun. This all-inclusive retreat is going to be unforgettable. We are offering payment plans through Affirm, so be sure to visit womenbuildglobal.com to register today. Spaces are filling quickly, so ladies and young ladies, you really, really don't want to miss this Mothers and Daughter Edition Women Build Cancun. Thank you and welcome to our first online and in-person visitors. TFH, you know how we do it. Let's give them a warm welcome. Lastly, we wanna make sure that we're praying for our lead pastors. We have awesome leaders here at TFH and they labor tirelessly for us. So please, by all means, please keep them in your prayers. My name is Ayana and this has been your TFH exclusive. We want testimonies. Thank you, Jesus. Whoa. Whoa. My God. For your glory. 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 Hey, it's for his glory. One more time. Take about 30 seconds to praise. What God is doing in this house, you can't orchestrate. No man can hinder our God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Apostle, I've been seriously in church for 30 years. I'm 67 years old. Yes, ma'am. And I have worked in ministry in all kinds of areas of ministry. Yes, ma'am. And I found uh, a real passion for the young people. And I, I uh, was working in youth ministry when I heard about you. Tyrell and Shakias kept inviting me here yeah. so we worked together mm -hmm. and I kept fighting it you know and I I was gonna come up early and God said wait you don't know what you're going for mm -hmm. and so when you made this final call and people come up even when the line was taken long he was still talking to me mm -hmm. and I'm coming up here because today he has delivered me from self-deception. Wow. When Tamron... Tamara, her dream? Your dream? Yeah. Yeah. And I kept thinking it was people and me and the way I interacted with them. Mm -hmm. But it was me and what I thought my relationship and what I knew about God was. Mm -hmm. And I remember he always deals with me in years of five. Yeah. And in 2020, my sister passed. But right after that, you had... It's a car, mm -hmm. even in the midst of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, those are people that trust you, that would mm -hmm. do something like this. I need to be there. Mm -hmm. And he told me, he said, you will not leave this place without joining that church. Because mm -hmm. you don't want to join that church because you don't want to be challenged. Mm -hmm. Because I had always worked in ministry. Mm -hmm. And I came, and we, we finally had the foundation class. And Pastor Corey taught the foundation class. And I knew his background. Mm -hmm. But there was such a love and a reverence for God. And the way he taught us the word. Yeah. And I was like, yes, God. And I realized today that even though I kind of, I grew up like you, I didn't have a mother mm -hmm. to protect me. And so I said, I have to protect myself. Mm -hmm. So even in getting to know God, there's always been a little bit of, I'm just going to keep this right here, you know. And I, find, I realized I know of God, mm -hmm. but I didn't know God. Yeah. You know the difference? Yes. And I said today, I'm not going to keep fighting because I heard you say, and I hear it every time I watch it real, I just sold out. Yeah. I just sold out, yeah. you know, and I want to be sold out. I, do. I, I don't want to be deceived anymore. He has allowed me to do good things and help a lot of people, Jesus. but there's so much more I can do if I just... I don't want to be deceived mm -hmm. in myself anymore. So I confess today that I am going to sell out. Yes. He said I had to do it publicly. Yes. Because people needed to see that yes. a mother yes. in the church as they think still needs to know God, not know of God, but to know. You were a mother in age, but God's going to make you a mother spiritually because you can't mother unless you're sold out. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. There it is. There it is. He's going to give you a depth. Going to train you at 67 years old. Fire be on her right now. Courage to sell out. That's it. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's it. Come on, baby. Go up in tongues. Come on. Now I command that self-deception to come out of her. All that pain, trauma, abandonment, all of it, all of it, all of it, all of it, all of it. All of those guards, all of those walls, come down, come down and subject yourself to the spirit of the living God. Now, in the name of Jesus, enter into her heart in a way that you have never encountered her before. Here it comes. Here it comes. Like fire now. From the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Here it comes. Here it comes. Fire! Now! Just put it on. Go! Right now. One more time. One, two, three. Here it comes. Go. Move now. Through our entire body. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Stand to your feet and give them glory. Stand to your feet and give them glory. Give them glory. Give them glory. 
Keep him coming. Keep him coming. Hey, keep him coming. For the great things he's doing. For the great things he's doing. For the great things he's doing. Thank you, Jesus. Give us your story. Um, so I really struggled to um, come up here. Even as I was standing, there was a wrestle on me. I feel like ever since I was young, um, there's been this heaviness on me. My mom, I lived in instability, and I was dealing with a mother wound for years, which causes me, my, rejected by my family, abandoned, and my heart is hardened mm -hmm. on and off. And I want to say sorry to my brothers and sisters in Christ because I ask God, I want to love, but I can't receive his love, and I can't love, genuinely love everybody around me all the way. I can't. I, I feel like I'm dying. I feel like I'm fighting every single day. Just before I moved back to Maryland, um, I was in a, had a seizure, random seizures. I had to go to the hospital in Kansas. Random seizures. Keep losing everything. Keep losing everything. It's a fight on my life. It's a fight on my It is a fight on my life. You ready to go? Get up? Stand up, baby. Come on. Stand up. Say, Father. Say, I, Father. No, English. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I break every covenant with darkness. I break every covenant with bitterness. I break, come on, stand up. I break every covenant with hatred. Leave me. Father, I, uh uh, English, I ask you to make my heart like flesh. I receive you as Lord. And now, have you, have you been in any kind of activity with any, has anybody been discipling you in the past in anything dark? Psychic, what else? Okay. Teach you how to read minds or anything like that. Take this off. That's a false symbol of a false god. Say, bring all the books, bring all the charms, bring them all and burn them in the presence of our God. Every idol must come down, must come down. Every idol must come down, must come down. Bring all the charms, bring all the books, bring all the balsam de vehenda le Every idol must come down, must come down, must come down. Every idol must come down in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, I break every covenant, every covenant that has held me back. God, even with this psychic, Father, deliver me from the spirit of the occult. Come on, deliver me. Come on, you're sitting in that bloodline. You've been drawn to it. Come on. Come on. Nope. It's not God. This is a religious spirit. Come on. We commanded to come out. Come out. Come out. Don't pray in tongues. Come out of there. Come out because you feel it and you're resisting it with tongues, but you're not going to pray in tongues through this one. If you come up to confess, you still want to get free. You still want to get free. All right. Say, Father, release me from bondage. Release me from everything evil, everything wicked. Say, I let it go. I let it go. Now, pray with her. After you pray with her, I'll come back. Come on, pray in tongues, 30 seconds. Come on, come on. 30 seconds in tongues. Charms and all 
out your books. We burn them by fire. We burn them by fire. Hey. Katavana Nambara Boko Popolo Boshata Kata. Oh! Santa la bada bakata la bako popo shoto ba Sapara bandele hete moho shanda la hakata Setele behinda la bahanda bakata Sabalo pray in the spirit for a moment Tele beko shata Pray! Pray people! your story, your testimony. and masturbation since I was a kid mm -hmm. and um, to the point where even as I got older I experimented sexually even with siblings mm -hmm. um, and as I continued to grow I felt my mind was so perverse even now that lately I have been uh, believing this lie that I am Mm. and that God does not love me yes. and that I Devil am not a son lie. as much as I love this house I can't lie looking at the name the father's house scares me because I don't feel like a son and I've never even knew what that was like because I didn't know my own father as much as you I wanted to you can come up Aldo um, are you in line Trent because I don't need you holding catching I um I even apologize to Elder Fakir because I've been talking to him lately, but I haven't been talking to him because I have not believed God enough to go to the elders of the church. I feel like the last man that I trusted to help me when I fell in sin, mm -hmm. he wanted me to pull my genitals out and pull up a video of pornography. And I repent to my pastor too because I didn't trust him I don't feel like I'm a man turn around and face them to every woman whose inbox that I went in, whether I wanted to, or even when it was the spirits, mm -hmm. when I didn't even know, I repent. There you go. There you go. There you go. This is the New Testament model. And the women say, we receive it. My God. Anything else you want to say, son? I just want to be free so that I can be the me that God created me to be. Yeah, turn around and tell him, say, I was broken. I was broken. Forgive me. I and was I was broken. doing what I was taught to do. And I was doing what I was taught to do. But after today. But after today. The story changes. God is changing your name, Tyro. You are forgiven. You are a son of God. You are a son. Where's Pastor at? You are a son. Pray for him, Elder. Come on, shut your hands and pray for your brother. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. 
that every form of bondage is breaking. It's breaking. It's breaking. It's breaking. Just lay your hands on them out. I got it. It's breaking. Breaking at the sound of my words. At the sound of my words. The orphan spirit, let him go. There we go. Come out of them. 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 Come out. Come out. Put your hands on them, Elder. Come out of them. Now. Now. Reversion. Every chain. Every chain. Every chain. Break at the power of the word, my words. Now. The power of the blood of Jesus Christ is flowing now from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. And there's a mighty washing, washing, a washing that's taking place. A washing, wash him, Jesus. Wash him, wash him. My God, my God. I go into the mind now. I break the system, the systems of sexual promiscuity every image move back move back for a minute elder jerome put your hands on them promise just move back y'all just move back i just want one person in the name of jesus in the mind go into the mind holy spirit every image that replays the memory recall that reminds him that shows him the images that he's seen through pornography come out of there i dismantle the spirit of pornography I dismantle sexual promiscuity I dismantle you every system set up break down break down I send a virus into your system the power of the blood now into the system set up to break him down and to keep him dysfunctional in the name of Jesus take a deep breath and blow it out Tyrell oh incest Come out of there. Incest, incest, molestation. Come out of there. Out of there. Predatory spirit. Out of there. Call it out, Elder. In the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. against every system. Yeah. Come out of there. Thank you, Jesus. When I'm casting out devils, don't put the don't put the camera on the person. All right? they're directing you from the back when we get to casting out devils don't put the camera on a person you can do it when they testify okay all right Hallelujah. clap your hands yeah. God. you can't put a time limit on this type of service come on oh calling out sexual and perversion and all of that I my heart was beating really really fast because I can identify with that for as long as I can remember I've been a preacher's kid 
Um, always been in church. Church is pretty much what I knew. And I've been on autopilot for as long as I can remember. Um, I've never felt good enough unless I was singing. I never felt accepted. I always felt socially awkward. Um, I wouldn't let people in at all as a way to protect myself from a little girl. Um, I was touched and molested by my brother. My cousin was the first one to insert in me. Um, because I would wet the bed when I was little, my, my parents made me sleep in a bed with my brother. And I would wake up. I would wake up with my underwear and my clothes wrapped really, really tight around my knees. And I couldn't understand why. And when I, would, when I got enough courage to say it to my parents, they couldn't do nothing about it because it was my brother. And then when I got scoliosis, when I was a little bit older, I got angry with the church because I felt that they should have enough power to reverse what was going on in my body. And so I was given the age, I was given the decision to determine if I would have corrective surgery at 14. And so now I have metal in me where it still affects me today. I was exposed to pornography early on. I was forced to lay in a living room in an apartment where we lived and have somebody play with my genital area. I was forced by my older sister, um, which then prompted me to give away my virginity at 14. I made the decision because I thought that was the only way that I would be accepted. I tried smoking pretty much around the same age and then I ended up sleeping with several married men and I felt that I committed adultery, although they were the ones that were married. I have ran from every call. I never felt good enough. I never felt accepted. I've always felt like a burden. I don't know how to have friends because I felt there was always something wrong with me. And so I ran and I've been running and I don't know how to stop. I have dealt with masturbation looked at pornography while I carried my children and I would pray that I would not that they would not deal with the same issues but I know that they do have some of the same issues because it wasn't dealt with and I didn't want to get married knowing that there was something in me that I didn't know how to get out and but nobody would listen to me when I went to the pastor and I asked him what to do, and he was just say, pray about it and leave it alone. So I repent to you, Apostle, and I repent to you, Pastor Corey, because I have been missing in action, because I don't know what accountability looks like. I don't know what acceptance looks like. I've always felt like I had to be the strong one even with me being the youngest. I don't know what that is to be accepted. Elder, I want you to come speak to her first. You're speaking to her life. And then we're going to pray. The Lord just highlighted you.
daughter, I've never left you. I wasn't missing. And I'm here now. And I want you to know that everything that you thought you were missing and nurturing, every way in which you were isolated, I call you forth into my arms now. I call you into my arms to receive the compassion and love. For I have a purpose for you. And it's not for you to be in bondage. It's not for you to perish and pine away. But it's for you to receive the fullness of who I am. And this is the day where it's going to change. This is the day where you're going to receive, yeah. There's a new glory that's going to come on you. And you're going to receive even like an opening. Because I'm calling you up into just a new dimension in your relationship with me. Because you've been transparent. And even as my word says that you overcame the accuser of the brethren. You overcame, it would be said that you overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the words that you spoke. As you spoke these words, he was overturned. He was overturned in from generations past and he is overturning the generations that are to come. Your sons and their sons and their sons and their sons. Those things that you were terrified of, they won't come upon you. For I, says the Lord, for I, says the Lord, have come to comfort and I've come to fight for you. My arm is revealed on this day. Let this day be marked. Say, Father. Say, Father, thank you. I receive every word. Now as an act of my will, I choose to forgive. I forgive. I want you to name your abusers. them all wow Jesus let me know when you're done say father I break soul tie with them I cut the cords in the name of Jesus and they will not control me any longer Say, I release myself from all woundedness, all bitterness, all brokenness, all pain, all doubt, and even the lack of trust. I let every wall down, and I let you in. Because what happens is, is when you try to protect yourself from people, you actually shut God out. And which is why there's been this immobility in your spiritual walk. You've been crippled. But by the power of God now, I extend my hands toward you. And I command your legs and the spirit to begin to straighten up. I command your back to begin to straighten up. I command every part of you to align with the word and the nature of God. And I call it, I feel you, Jesus. I call it in now. I call it in now. I call it in now. In the name of Jesus. Now, and I command all of that pain to come out of you. All of that pain distrust all of that doubt all of that confusion all of that sexual sin come out come out masturbation pornography fornication everything that came through the bloodline I sever it and when I sever it today it's going to leave your children in the name of Jesus whoa Take your hands off him for a moment. In the name of Jesus, leave her. Leave her. Leave her. I command that mental confusion. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Come out. The cloud, the darkness, depression, oppression. All of you, pick your roots up. Go. That's it. Yell it out, baby. Come on. Release it. Release. That's it. Oh, yes. Come on, baby. 
God's been waiting for this moment. I command that dark cloud to go. Now joy is coming. I remove the noose from your neck. Labor with it, Michelle. Come on. Come on. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is glory. Come on. If you got any appointments or anything, I release you. We're going to go until God finishes. The reason I came up here was because of um, sexual sin. I've been addicted to pornography since I was 10. And ever since then, uh, it, it it feels like that my mind, no matter how hard I try just to stay um, on the right path, will always wander off to the right path, to the wrong path. And it has caused me to do things I'm not proud of. Things that I am to haunt it to this very day. Mm. I've let fear of actually get the best of me at times. I know I, did, I, did, I know I disappointed my family. And I don't want my brothers to do what I've done. Come here. Come up here. Yeah. Come up here, JB. The Father is introducing himself to you today. Somebody get the mic. Get your hands. There's awareness, an awareness that's about to come over you. The fear of God is going to grip you. Yeah. Take a deep breath. Blow out. Say, Father, I repent ask you to forgive me of sexual sin. He said if I would come to you, you would not cast me away. Deliver me, Jesus. To ask him, that's it. Say, deliver me from all bondage. Yeah. Make me new again. By the power of Jesus Christ that is invested in me, as I lay my hands on you, I command Every spirit that has held you down, that has even come through the womb, here it comes, right now, that's come through the womb, I break now by the authority of Jesus Christ. I command it to leave. I command the spirit of sexual sin. Take a deep breath. Come on. Leave his body. Leave his body now. Leave his body now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, labor with him, Elder Jerome. Come on, around us, front. Put your hands on them and command it to leave them. That's it. That's it.
Somebody celebrate. Revival is coming to the youth department. And it's going to start with repentance from dead works. Hey, fire, 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 fire. Come on. God said, Are you going to deal with your intellect? Going to help you process spiritual things. Let it be so. Come here, son. What you got? Give her the mic. Um, ever since second grade in school, I was showed pornography, and so I was getting curious, and so I searched it up at home. And so ever since second grade, I have been um with that spirit, and uh, um I've been in school and. Even as I repented for that and all those things, I have been with friends. Not like that, but like they have been around me um, and they would be like coming with these nicknames and I've accepted some false identities that I do not want. What kind of false identity? Um, There's no shame here. Um... Like, um, it's not appropriate for you. Okay. And I want every parent to begin to pray right now. And I, every intercessor pray. Every person has ever been delivered begin to pray. Pray! Like it's your own family member. And I knew, and I knew I couldn't go on like this no more. Because What'd you say? I knew I couldn't go on like this no more because prophecy has been a big thing in my life. I was born actually from prophecy. She got a prophecy about me. She said I was born I to was prophesy. Born to prophesy. And so I cannot oh, go on here. to continue like this. Kirsten's going to pray for you. She, she, he said, I was born. I can't go on like this. I was born to prophesy. What? What? There's a generation rising that will not settle for perversion. They will not surrender to homosexuality. Ha! Ha! Do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. You always hear me when I pray. You always hear me, Father. Hey. I asked him for a generation that would be holy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I asked him for the platform to preach the unadulterated word that would bring his sons and daughters into holiness and righteousness. I asked him for it. Yeah. We release the power to live holy. Here it comes. We release the power to live holy. The power and the grace. That's it. Right there. Right there, baby. Come on. Let it out. That's it. Come on. That's it. Bring them close. Come on. I release upon you the grace for holiness. Hey. Courage to be set apart. Come on. Receive it. Let fire be upon his head now. In the name of Jesus, let every person that he encounters from this day forward, let them be set ablaze with his testimony. Deliverance, Father, we thank you that you're setting accountability around him. People that have eyes to see. Thank you for the youth leaders that are coming. I thank you for the courage to tell this story. Father, today, 
it changes for him it changes for him it changes for him that's it the power of the Holy Ghost Whoa. that's right cough it up baby come on come out of them come out of them get some tissue come out of them Come on, cast the devil out. We thank God for it. We thank God for his power. 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 There is no God like you. There is no God like you. Oh, King of glory. Oh, King who dares stand against the one who is seated on the throne. What power stands against the one who is seated? What power can overthrow him? No man can dethrone him. No man has power. Who has power over him? No one, no one has power over him. Whoa. Shine! Pray in tongues for a moment, people. Oh, oh, pray. Let your hands to one. To the sovereign God. Hey, to the holy God. Hey, 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 hey. Whoa, come on. To the sovereign God, to the holy God, to the holy God, to the holy God, to the holy God, who's able, who's worthy, 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 he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. We thank you. 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 Wow, shay about your voice so bad. the God can take your place be seated on the throne of my heart again no other God can take your place be seated on the throne of my heart again that's your song be seated be seated be seated on the throne throne of my heart again you are Yahweh you are Yahweh you are Yahweh and no other God can take your place be seated on the throne of my heart again you are Yahweh uh, testify Um, I took the last bit of money that I had and I paid my pay in full speed. A couple days later, I literally lost everything. My house, my car, 
it wasn't working. I lost everything. So many of y'all thought that I was traveling because I was working, which I was, but I really was traveling because I was homeless. My God. <laughs> so all of 2019, since about August, traveling back and forth, my kids separated. My daughter having to stay with her boyfriend's family because when she came home from college, she didn't have nowhere to go. <laughs> so I lost my faith. I felt like God abandoned me. He wasn't there for me. He didn't care. I did all that I could do all the years that I was saved, and I only had me. So I saw all I told myself. All you got is you. You don't have nobody else. You got to make it yourself. And that's what I did. So I built a kingdom myself. I invited in who I wanted to invite in. I did what I wanted to do. I established it the way I wanted to establish it. Now I will say, I could see God's hand protecting me because there were times when I was doing things that I could have been killed or murdered in the city. <clears throat> but yet his hand protected me. There's situations where I probably should be in jail now, but his hand protected me. So 2022, I thought I had it. I had wonderful luxury apartments. My cousin was in, high, was in private school. I had a great relationship. Things were going the way that I wanted them to go. What I thought. And then everything fell again. So once again, I found myself in a cycle. And I said to the Lord, I actually called you and asked you what about, I asked you about uh, backsliding. How do I know if I'm backsliding? You said, do, am I backslidden? Yeah, I said, am I, I said, you know the answer to that. Or you did. Like that. And you said, this is my definition of backslidden. When you go back to do the things that you used to do. So I said, well, yeah, I'm backslidden. So I prayed a prayer. Kind of like I, my definition, but yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so but I prayed a prayer and I said, Lord, I, I didn't know that I was backslidden, but you said you was married to the backslidden. Yeah. So. Okay, help me. I still have a little faith in you. You said must have seen faith. So what I thought was going to change, again, things just crumbled worse. And I found myself dealing with depression and suicide this last year. And I had nothing and nobody again to turn to. And the Lord said, but you did. But I didn't know. Yeah. Right. <coughs> so he said, well, I did. I turned to him. I did. You're right. Um, and I was praying or talking. And he said, you have the ability. I asked him, why can't I be successful? Why am I constantly in cycles? You have the ability to build, but you have no foundation. So I said, what does that mean? And he told me he was the foundation. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay. If you teach me how to create you as my foundation, I'll let everything go. I'll try to let everything go. So this has been my journey. And so I haven't come to church because I wanted to build something outside of church, outside of performance, outside of what I was taught, just me and him, because you've taught me who he was. You introduced me to the father. I didn't know him before here. Mm -hmm. You introduced me to kingdom, but I didn't know it for myself. I only knew what you told me, and I needed to find it for myself. So these last, I did fast and pray, and I completed a, a Daniel fast for the first time, which was very successful for me um, because he definitely broke some things off for me. But I had to come today, and I didn't want to stay in here, but I'm standing here to break off the opinion of man and shame and also to publicly give my life back to Christ and submit and surrender unto him. I don't want to be back. I am proud of you. It's not God's model for you to develop intimacy outside of the house of God. But that's the mindset that comes when you're building your own kingdom. Yes. And so today, you just publicly crushed your kingdom. Yes. A kingdom that you build unto yourself can only be crushed by your own hands. That's it. 
I can pray and pray, but I'll have no authority within the walls that you establish. Here it comes. Come on. Right now. We crush, command, self-idolatry. Come on. Come on. The exaltation of your own opinion. All of that stubbornness. Come on, take a deep breath and blow it out. Say, Father, I renounce it. I accept your way. It's your, you're coming into the school of the Holy Ghost now. He's about to teach you some things for real. Take a deep breath. Say, I receive it. Father, with the power you've invested in me, I release my hand upon her right now. And I thank you, Father, even to authorize you as a daughter. Because you have even been questioning. You asked me the other day, am I still a daughter? And my word is yes. I publicly affirm and establish today. Yeah. Your place within the Father's house. You are a daughter outside of your works. Outside of anything that you can do for this house. It was never about that anyway. It was about proximity. Come on. In the name of Jesus Christ. I release fire into this heart. That's it. That's it. That's it. Let it go one minute, Crystal. Fire into the heart. Into the soul. To the spirit. Set her on fire. Realign everything about our life. The Lord says, daughter, your sins are forgiven. Now go and sin no more. That's it. Yeah. You're about to feel a warm embrace. Here comes the Holy Spirit. He's about to fill you again. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. That's it. Take a deep breath. They got you. Take another deep breath. Here he comes. You got her? Isn't it amazing? Here comes peace. Here comes joy. That's it. Grace. His grace is sufficient. Now we shut the door to the past. Thank you, Father, that you cover your daughter. In Jesus' name. Come and embrace her, Clarice. Hallelujah. Come up, bring that line around here. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I have a testimony. I joined this church, I want to say June of last year. Mm -hmm. And um, it took me a while to join because I knew it was going to cause some issues at my old church because I grew up there. And I knew they weren't going to like it. You were Koji? Yes. And um, it got to the point, I was like, I just can't stay here no more. So I joined in June and... On July 3rd, my mom's birthday, she had a stroke right in front of me. And um, me and my mom had a, um, we didn't have the best relationship. I would say, describe her as like Dr. Jack or Dr. Hyde. She would act one way and act a different way at home. So I love my mother, but we weren't friends. I didn't really like her, to be honest. I hate to say that, but I didn't. Um, so she had a stroke and she already had heart conditions. So when she went to the hospital, um, they got the stroke out, but it was a blood clot in her heart. Then she had to have emergency surgery because she had a hernia. Then she caught um, pneumonia. So altogether, she had to have about four extra surgeries. And um, I had just joined here, and I was so tired. But I found myself rushing here and pressing my way here because I knew that the spirit of God was here and I was being filled in such a way that I didn't care what I looked like I didn't care if I had on the same clothes from yesterday I didn't care if my hair was that I said I know God is here I know God is equipping me to deal with my mom and um they said she was going to die and for a while I had been putting my finger on my mom's hair I don't know why I was doing that I was just doing that she couldn't talk she had the tube in her mouth and she looked crazy she's like an animal she was swollen and she looked 
you know, crazy. And they said she was going to die. And I was like, no, we're going to have to fast. We just fasted for one day. And we fasted on the time. We prayed on the times of her birthday. And they called us and they said, oh, she's breathing. And I said, I know, because God told me she was going to breathe. And that same day, you did this to me. So that was, for me, that was like confirmation, like, oh, he got you. He going to heal your mother. So, you know, time goes on, goes on. And as I'm taking care of my mother, I feel like God was restoring our relationship. And I thank God for that because I lost a lot of people last year. And I needed my mom. And I thank God for restoring our relationship. Um, she is still unable to talk. Like she thinks she's she what she thinks she's saying she's saying in her head, but it's not coming out the right way. So we can kind of make out some words. But at first she wasn't able to walk. She can walk a little bit. And on Friday she got discharged from the nursing home this Friday. So I thank God. And today is my 31st birthday. And thank you. And it would have been a time where I would have been having sex. I would have been in the club or smoking weed to break in my birthday, but I found myself last night laying prostrate before the Lord, speaking in tongues, and thanking God for another year, and declaring that I will do His will, and I will follow Him. So I thank you, Apostle. I thank you for your surrendering. I thank you for what you're instilling me. I'm learning so much. And I thank God for placing me here, for moving me to Baltimore and to the Father's house. I just thank God. I thank God. Now, Father, unlock a deeper dimension of the healing anointing upon her life now. In Jesus' name, this faith that she had for her mother, let her have it, Father, day to day. I release uncommon miracles upon her right now. In the name of Jesus Christ and a mindset for ministry, you brought her out to send her forth. And so, Father, we thank you for what you're cultivating in your daughter. We thank you for her testimony. We thank you for the mighty deliverance. The Lord says, I've even put upon you a grace, a grace for the addict and a grace, yeah, for the fornicator. There will be a grace. And you're going to see in the seasons to come that there's going to be this strange thing you have with your testimony. An anointing is going to come into the space that you testify. And people are going to throw their uh, drugs down and they're going to throw and they're going to testify about God breaking them free from cycles and pain and so Father we thank you for what you're doing and in this in, in, in due season when you're ready to release it upon her publicly we will stand and proclaim that the Lord spoke it and it shall not be otherwise so Father I thank you for the word that you're putting in her mouth for the grace that you placed upon her even the grace to be a wife in the name of Jesus I release it 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 in Jesus name somebody say thank God I don't know if you all remember her but in the Bible study if you was here in the Bible study this is the same woman that brought her weed and her her smoke her, her stuff and she threw it on the altar and so God is growing her he's extending grace toward her and because she was willing to lay it down he's healed her mother yes Lord in the name of Jesus your mother came out because you had the faith to believe it and when you change your life it set the bar in the realm of the spirit and I decree that you will not look I say that there will be no backlash no temptations to move backwards I decree that you would only go forward in Jesus name we celebrate God thank him who's next so I've been um, I came to repent for the idolatry um, I've been praying for God to cast down all idols in my heart and in that he's been exposing so so much in me that it's just really hard to really deal with. And I realize that I can't be who God created me to be as long as I'm serving these false gods. What's the false gods? People, mm -hmm. men, uh, money, education, everything. Um, and I feel like, like I've been having these dreams where like I'm walking into who God's called me to be and I'm losing all of these people. And I'm just so scared to lose everybody. Mm -hmm. But. I'm tired of having to be somebody that I'm not. I'm tired of having to be who 
God hasn't called me to be, so today I'm just surrendering. I'm okay with losing everything. I'm okay with losing everybody as long Give as I can mic keep too for God. And as and long Gianna. as Jesus can reign in my heart, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. Fakir is going to speak to you, and then we're going to pray. Amen. Get another mic ready for Zion. And the Lord says, you're even like a Simeon. You're even like a Simeon. And Simeon was in the temple waiting for Jesus to appear. And you're, you're going to go through a season where I'm preparing you, says God. I'm preparing you to be a watcher and one that would wait upon me, a servant. One that serves me from a very, very faithful place. And I'm going to give you even like a strength and a determination for battling for my purposes. You're going to be one that fights for my purposes and waits to see them come to pass. For I'm giving you even like, even like a, a almost like a stubbornness. I'm, gonna, I'm causing that to, to, to be set upon you for you're going to be an intercessor. There's an intercessory call upon you to be one that prays, to be one that prays when others sleep, one that, one that wars for me when others are resting, says the Lord. And I'm placing it upon you. So get ready. Get ready for deeper consecration. Get ready for a deeper place of prayer. And even as you come and as you've uh, inserted yourself into this house, get ready to be paying attention and, 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 be, and be setting yourself, setting yourself to hear what I would say unto you because it's a special call. It's not like anything you've seen before because you've seen different versions and you've gotten different impressions of what it might look like to serve me but God says I'm going to give you even like a special wind that I'm blowing upon you it's coming upon you even right now it's coming upon you right now to receive to receive even a grace a grace to pray a grace for consecration and a grace for fasting says the Lord it's going to come upon you swiftly let me in add Jesus to that name. but the Lord says before he does that he's going to teach you how to be a daughter before he does that He's going to teach you how to be a daughter. Everything that he said was correct. But there's this part of you that's struggling to know God like an orphan. You're struggling to know God. And the Lord wants to reveal himself to you. When he reveals himself to you, there will be no fear. When he reveals himself to you, all of that doubt that you've been wrestling with will go away. There's been this thing that's been coming up in your mind, that's been trying to convince you to go in another direction. But God says, I have chosen you. You didn't choose him. And so because he chose you and you did not choose him, today is a day of decision. You gotta make a choice if you're gonna let it go. Lift your hands. Are you ready? Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I rededicate my life to you today I let it all go I surrender every idol I surrender even the fear of man come on take a deep breath I surrender it now in the name of Jesus and I receive who you've called me to be and that as a daughter and out of that I'll fulfill my call to pray for others in Jesus name take a deep breath one more time. Receive the Holy Ghost. Come on. There we go. Bring her here. Receive the Holy Ghost right now. Take a deep breath. Blow. Yeah. You're blowing out, but you're receiving him. Fire on you right now. Lay your hands on her, Diana. We release the fire of the Holy Ghost. May revival come to her own prayer life. May revival come to her study life. May revival come. May a deep passion begin to well up from her spirit. In the name of Jesus, a deep passion. God, we rebuke every religious spirit. And we bring about, Father, the pure and the unadulterated power of God into her life. Let every wrestle be destroyed. Let it come under subjection to the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, give the honor my Y'all move quickly with these mics. You got it? Okay. Get the next one ready. Um, when I was four, Get my um, shoes, Najee. I was molested by another child when I was in Head Start um, in the classroom while the teacher was there, but no one saw. Um, and immediately after that, I recognized that that's when I started having these like feminine feelings. Mm -hmm. I identified with, you know, 
things that were of you know women and girls and things like that. Um, so that was the earliest thing I can remember as far as homosexuality coming into my life. Um, and I never said anything to anybody because I knew um, that it wasn't supposed to be there. I just didn't have the language for it. Then by the time I got to high school, um, I went to a performing arts school where it was okay. And they said that it was okay. Um, and so I just walked into it with no issue, but I recognized that I didn't have the peace that I thought I would feel. Um, and so I would try to talk to ministers and things like that in my life that I knew of and even ministers at my old church and explain to them what I was feeling, but no one could give me clear answer on what to do and how to do it. So there were nights that I would think that it was easier just to go ahead and die because I knew that it was wrong and I couldn't help it. And I remember feeling alone because no one else could relate to what I was feeling. And I didn't want to, you know, go to hell. So I was like, Lord, just, just take me away. It's easier that way. Um, even like with the relationship with my dad, I didn't always have a good relationship with him. So there were people who identified that I was also looking for a father. So there were men who, some, even on, being honest, some of those were preachers and they kind of chased after me. Yep. So it kind of created a certain level of distrust even when it came to ministers and things like that because I didn't know who to trust anymore. Because when I went for help, I couldn't find help. They were predators. Yeah. Um, and so by the time 2020 hit, um, I kind of just surrendered to God. And I was like, you know, I don't know how to do this, but I'll figure it out myself. So I just said, I'm just going to go on a fast for a week and walk out of this thing by myself. And I left it there back then. Um, but the only thing that didn't leave was masturbation and pornography. Um, so I was still, I'm still wrestling and struggling with that. Um, but today, I really want to lay it down. Um, I actually I reached out to Pastor Corey yesterday because I was, you know, um, during my prayer time, the Lord just told me to do it. And I normally wouldn't do that, but I reached out to him and I just told him, he said, you know, we'll talk today. And then um, I got nervous this morning because I was like, I don't think I'm going to go. So I decided to stay home, honestly. But I did not turn it on TV and I watched service. And then, um, before even any of this happened, I was like, okay, maybe I should go. <laughs> So, because I live in D.C., so, like, the, the fare to get here was, was skyrocket. So I was like, Lord, if you want me to go, you need to show me a sign or something like that. So when I went back, when I, when I went back on Lyft, it dropped down like $60, like $50 to get here. And I was like, okay, that's your sign. We're going to help you with that. <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> so on the way here, I was like, okay, I see people getting the testimony. I was like, I'll just sit in the back. I won't go up there. But then I just was like, I really just want to crucify it. I want to leave it here. So just lift your hands now and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent of my sins. I lay it down. Father, I thank you that you said you would not cast me away. So, Father, I repent of and say what you're repenting for. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, I ask you to wash me. You break covenant with it now. So, Father, I just pray for Zion, and I thank you, Lord, that you're pouring grace out on him. Put your hands on him for care. You're pouring grace out on him. And you're delivering him, Father, from the power and from the beast called masturbation and pornography. You come on Sunday, I release a fire upon it now. And I just command it to loose its grips. Loose its grips right now. In the name of Jesus, that self-soothing, that self-idolatry, all of it. Bring them here. In the name of Jesus. That's right. That's right. That's right. God, we thank you, Lord, that you are delivering your son, yeah, from all wickedness, yeah, from everything unclean. Take a deep breath and blow out. Whoa, yeah. Be commanded to leave you now in the name of Jesus. Now, come on, your time is up. He's broken covenant with it. In the name of Jesus, we destroy the works of darkness in Zion's life. We lay an axe to the root. Lift him. Loose him. Come out of him. Shakataba. Shetepe Ndolobokotopa. Go. Come on. Cast it out of him. In the name of Jesus. 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 Hey. Seve, Toma Catili and don't take a bunch of Tanabacata. Shut up, y'all moving too slow with napkins and stuff. Kanda Labokosha, give me some napkins in a bag and stuff. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come out of them. Come out of them. 
Come out of them. Go. Go. I say come out of them. You don't get to say no. He's broken covenant. He's broken covenant. Come out. He's broken covenant. No, you're not going to make a scene. Be still. Be still. Be still in the presence of God. I take authority now. S still. Loose your hold. All of you, go. Sodomy, sexual sin, out of them. Now, go. 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 Keep on. Go ahead for care. Keep your hands there, Elder Jerome. Go ahead. For this reason was the Son of God made manifest to destroy the works of darkness. For this reason was the Son of God made manifest to undo wickedness, to undo uncleanness in the name of Jesus. Come on, baby. Go ahead. Tell us your story. dysfunction and when my um my parents got divorced I felt like if I could be perfect enough that my dad would love me and if I could be strong enough I could take some weight off of my mom and um depression and, and suicide started coming in um but God found me and I got really close to him and I promised God that I would give him you know my that I would um that I would keep my virginity and that I would serve him and then when I turned 17 and I lost my my virginity I fell into sexual sins and depression and my mom found me in it because I was um, cutting cutting myself in it. She come over here Kirsten. Go ahead, keep she talking. Took me to, she took me to the hospital and I was there for three days and when I got out the hospital I, you know I told God like I would go after you and I wanted to come here but it was COVID. And when um, the church opened back up, I remember it being Issachar. And I was like, Mom, we should go to Issachar. We went to Issachar. And um, I was like, OK, we're going to hit the ground running again. And we're going to serve God all the way. And the lady that um, prayed for me was one of the guest preachers. She said that if I gave God my yes, that he would save my whole family. But every time I feel like I want to give God my whole yes, it's like this fear. <laughs> and so I try to, after that, just live a perfect life. Like, okay, God, bring my family, bring, bring my family back to the to the house. <laughs> bring my bring my mom. But I, but I was trying to be perfect in my own strength instead of leaning instead of leaning on God and so I'm just confessing confessing that I've been my own God and I don't want to be my own God I want to surrender to God because I know he has more for me and I want to release the the fear <coughs> that's all 
Kirsten's going to pray for you. I'm just going to lead you through confession. Listen, the first thing I want you to know is God doesn't give you the responsibility of winning your family until you've been won. The Bible says that when you are strengthened, then you go and strengthen your brother. So I'm just going to break that false responsibility off of you. In the name of Jesus, I break it off of you. You feel it falling? That's it. Don't hold your coffin because they're leaving you now. I'm breaking that off of you. Bring her closer. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of that occult fear. Bring her closer. Don't let her fall until I finish with her. This thing that's been arresting you, that came through your bloodline, and even these water witching spirits, by the power of the living God. Come on up out of there. I see you. Say, Father. Say, Father, I give you permission to deliver me fully. Yeah, that's it. Come out of there. Fascination with water. Come out. Come out. Drawing and enticing. Come to the water. I break it. Every power that had been sent from the altar that your name is on. Yeah. I destroy it. I take authority over it now. Spirit of witchcraft. The spirit of Jezebel. Not on you, but it's coming through the blood. Come on. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In weakness in the area of sexual sin because it's in the blood. Come on. Out of there. In the name of Jesus. All of you. Out. Self-hatred. Come out. All of you. You can let her go today. My God. Today you're coming out of her. Seduction. Come out. It was sent. There's a grandmother that I'm seeing. Yeah. That thinks she has your destiny locked up. By the power invested in me. I destroy every altar. Back up, Crystal. For a moment. Come out. Now, every altar be destroyed. I send the fire to it. The angels of God. Come on. Now, there's a new contract. Say, I make covenant with you, Jesus. Say it. Let me see your face. Say, I make covenant with you, Jesus. And I ask you, yeah, to break every covenant. Every contract with my name on it. Ah. I apply the blood to it right now. Now, go in. Come on, somebody. I want a church that prays. I want a church that prays. Don't y'all tire out. Don't y'all tire out. Hey. When you lay down tonight, you're going to dream. The spirit of revival is coming to your homes too. Pray until you feel it broken, Kirsten. Until you feel it broken, Kirsten. Break it. You know you have authority over it. We command a spirit of suicide to come out of there. Self-mutilation, come out of there. Y'all make sure this blanket is on her right. I'm not fussing, but I'm fussing a little bit. All right. The people expose. Glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. Keep praying. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. I command the spirit of the mermaid to come out of her. The spirit of the mermaid. Out. 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 Call it out of there, Kirsten. Every covenant to every false god. 
that's affecting her from the bloodline, we destroy it. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Keep praying, Kirsten. Don't stop just because we move on. Don't y'all stop praying in here. Yeah. Yeah. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is. Y'all know this song? There is freedom. No? Holy Spirit, come like a mighty rushing wind. Come like a mighty rushing wind. Ah. Yeah. I would probably say probably from like the age of maybe like 12 or 13, uh, um, I had battled with just acceptance and rejection and you know all of that just due to, uh, my mother was married three times, so she would tend to push her kids away and that was just that. And so um, because of that lack of acceptance, I began to just seek other means of just like comfort and diving into like pornography and sexual sin and uh, just figuring out other ways to just bring in that that comfort um, and then I would probably say around that maybe like 18 or so um, I literally had just cut off like all of my family because I was like all oh, y'all crazy and I'm just I'm not there um, but what I realized was that um, that was a that was a self-protection that like kind of re rode over I think into not I think into my uh, my adult relationships too. keep talking and so um, uh, Coming here to Baltimore was 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 a lot. It has been a lot. Um, um, because of my lack of um, um it's all right. Because of my need to, um, um, because of my need to 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 want to be accepted uh, and want to be liked and, and all of that stuff, um, it's really caused me to just do some really dumb stuff. Um, uh, similar to to you know my brothers here. I haven't been in a lot of y'all DMs, and I just wanted to really repent publicly for that because uh, I think that, um, for one, from an integral standpoint, that's not nothing that you ever want to do, but um, I publicly want to just um, not only repent, but ask for forgiveness for yeah. uh, just... Um, Just, just my actions on on that end, and then um, to my pastors. Uh, I 
I've never I have pastors that just really rock with you. Um, and um, yeah, I want to uh, repent to my pastors for breaking your trust. Um, on multiple occasions, uh, but in that, still thank you for just your embrace, uh, your correction. Um, and all of that. And so what I wanted to do is what the Lord began to tell me um, as I started to go through my process of deliverance is that um, um, it's our job to disarm the enemy um, by, by telling on ourselves to release the shame and release the rejection and um, allowing the Lord to use some of the, well, all of the parts of your story uh, to bring healing to other people. And so even as I was sitting over there, I was like, this, no, no, sir, this ain't the day we want to do that. There's too many people here. They got all these nice cameras. No, sir, you ain't about to, this ain't it. I was like, I'm going to send this young text to Pastor Corey. We're going to talk about it, and we're going we gonna to go on about the business. But uh, because of just that rejection and that need to accept or that need to want to be accepted, it's causing me to hide. And uh, what I've learned is there's no freedom in that at all. Um, and so, yeah. We receive it. You've been forgiven. Pastor. You've been forgiven by us, but I honor your repentance to the church. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you that every broken place in his life be mended and healed yeah that's right come on somebody pray thank you Jesus my God God is so good isn't he good whoa thank you Jesus hallelujah we give God praise. Um, so, I haven't shared this, but um, growing up, I was molested by my cousin. Um, and I know that also that my mother recently had shared that she was also molested. Um, so I'm just trying to break the cycle of that. But it's also... Um, that I've realized that I've been in a cycle of sexual sin as well. Um, and I guess it's it's me trying to figure out my identity mm -hmm. and being accepted and just knowing who to trust. But also, like, my mom had also had trust issues, and I feel like that it's been pushed onto me. So I've had a hard time opening up to people and trusting and knowing who to trust um, just say father father thank you for being thank my you. savior thank you for being my savior today today i invite you as lord i invite you as, I lord. Invite you as, king. I invite you as king i repent i repent for sexual sin sexual sin and i repent and i repent for pushing you away for pushing you away by the power of god by the power of god by the power of god i invite I invite you into every empty space. Into em every empty space. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every void. Every void. I ask you to. I ask you to fill. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want you to pray for her. Um, so, uh, I, I've never been one that's like secure in my identity and that's something that I truly hated God for. And because I hated God, I hated his people. So because of that, I never trust his people. And I began to listen to the lies of the enemy that I'm not worthy enough and that like I'll always be stuck living behind someone else 
But um, yesterday, I uh, was actually entertaining that conversation with the enemy. And in the middle of it, God was like, watch this. And he literally crushed every lie that Satan has ever said to me. And he confirmed that I am worthy and that I don't have to be anyone else. And that it's okay to be me, the me that he made me to be. Do you want to confess anything else? Uh, I don't know. I also, I would like to repent to you, Apostle, because I hated you, but it wasn't you that I hated. It was just, I took what happened to me and put that on you out of fear. So I, I repent and I'm sorry. Forgiven. Anything else? Any other sins? Um, I... I uh, yeah, talk to me, Jalen. Next Sunday, I'm doing baptisms. Because a part of true conversion is to tell your story and be baptized from darkness into light. Um, for a large chunk of my life, from about six to 12, I was mishandled. What does that mean, Jalen? I was molested. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I thought that, I, I just thought so many different things. And I entertained impure things, impure thoughts. Um, I also struggled with homosexuality for a while and confessed things that I know I shouldn't have. And because of that, I also confessed out of my mouth that I confessed out of my mouth that I was an atheist and I didn't believe Jesus because I didn't understand why would he allow something like this to happen to me. Mm -hmm. And the light of Jesus Christ is here. For so long, those impure thoughts would just follow after me because I thought that that was right. But I was deceived, and I know that it's not right. So I come to the altar today, and I ask God to take all the <laughs> impure things from me. For a while, I didn't grow up in a church, so I was running from God when I got here, and I found myself at this job with someone, and I didn't know that she was a witch, and she, like, took me under her wing for a while, and I, I didn't understand what it was, and I was truly rejected, so I was just accepting the things that she was offering, and... Uh, it, it was a fight for me to get away, but because I was 
under where I was supposed to be, God made a way for me to be set free and break every, all those covenants that I made with that witch. Say, today, Jesus, today, I accept you fully. I accept you fully. Tell her to say that to Mike. I accept you fully I as Lord. You fully as Come Lord. into every Come area, into every area of, my life. of my life. In the name of Jesus, In the name of Jesus. rejection is being disarmed rejection. because you are my Father. Because you are my Father. I receive. I receive. You as my father. You as my father. As my Lord. As my Lord. Yes. Come here, Fakir. Just speak over her life. Come on. Yes. Yes. Come on. I said the light of Jesus Christ is here. Where the light of Jesus Christ is, there can be no darkness. Darkness is destroyed because of the light. He is the light. He is the light in the darkness. He is the light. He is the light in the darkness. He is the light that breaks every chain. There's no darkness that can hide in this present. Yeah. Light came and darkness could not comprehend it. Hey, somebody shout and thank God that he is the light. He is the light in the darkness. Hey! You are forgiven, Jalen. Made free. Woo! Made free. Yes. Yeah. Made free. Anybody grateful? That he brought you up out of a horrible pit. Does anybody remember from where he brought you from? If you remember, I want you to rejoice. I want you to rejoice. Hey. I want you to rejoice. He is a light in the darkness. He is a light in the darkness. He is a light in the darkness. Hey. He breaks every chain. He breaks every chain. He breaks every chain. Come up, son. Hey! Somebody say glory. Oh. I'm dancing for you ahead of time. We thank God. He's a God that delivers. Hallelujah. Tell us your story, son. decided to give God my anxiety and depression and um, you also made us fast after the prayer boards and I leaned into the fast and post the fast I fell back into anxiety and depression um, I felt ashamed for myself to feel those feelings again yeah. after giving it to God I felt it coming and I have things I can do to alleviate those feelings but I decided to lean into it. Um, and I just wanted to repent to God for feeling the shame, feeling the guilt. Um, uh, and I lean in on Pastor Corey, who reached out to my wife and told her to, um, to tell me to reach out to him. Uh, I wanted to apologize because um, I decided to uh, hide instead of reaching out to you because I felt like I would have been exposed. Um, and just wanted to apologize. Hope um, you forgive me. Um, I also decided to stop coming to church. Um, I just leaned into work and just staying busy. 
Um, so I didn't go to church for like this whole month, I think. Um, so I wanted to repent to you as well and ask for your forgiveness. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. There is, you got him? Come on, baby. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. condemnation Jesus. no condemnation I just want to pray for you father we lift your son up before you and we thank you listen when you're wrestling with things such as depression anxiety Jesus. it comes in seasons and it grips us if we're not careful if we're not guarded and one of the things that the enemy loves to do is to isolate us so cause us to disconnect from the people that we should be running to. But today, we just serve notice to the spirit of anxiety, anxiety and depression. And we decree that this today it ends. Father, I thank you that you're making him so fortified. In the realm of the spirit, you're making him fortified. I place the blood of Jesus Christ upon his entire body. We apply the blood over his ears we apply the blood over every whispering spirit we apply the blood and everything that had been sent every every door that has been opened we shut the doors in the name of jesus and as a matter of fact you say i shut every door say i shut every door father say father give me the strength to fight back father i release the kingdom into his life the kingdom of god which is righteousness peace and joy I pray that the revelation of the kingdom will be his portion. I pray that, Father, he will begin to seek you. I pray that everything that has been associated with this past is cut off in the name of Jesus. And I destroy everything that has come by way of soul ties, everything that has come by way of connections, by way that has come, everything that has come by way of, of, of family ties. In the name of Jesus, and I release, Father, a fresh season in his life, a new season. Let it turn. Let the page turn. Let the chapter turn. Turn. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Pray for me, Jacob. All right, guys. Oh, Regina. Um, so, okay, so like, uh, basically, no, I'm sorry, short. When I was, when I was young, I was molested by two of my cousins and was also like having this little other sexual thing with this, my, my other cousin, my step cousin, um, who's a girl. And then I decided at that point that I didn't trust men and I would rather be with women. So I came here and in 2017 I um I, that's when Sophia Ruffin was here, I think. And anyway, I got I got completely delivered from homosexuality, from lesbianism. And but I I backslided. So what happened was um I I still was in connection with exes and stuff like that. And that caused me to black to backslide. And from then it just was it, I just had like this back and forth pattern of like being there, not being there, being being with a girl, not being with a girl, and just like it just was like kind of double-minded, I guess. And I went through this season um, of just a whole bunch of stuff happening. Like I, you know, I was masturbating. I was watching pornography. I was having spirit husbands and stuff and uh, witchcraft stuff. I didn't understand why I was why this was happening, but I realized that at at that point that I had to completely cut off all ties with 
these different exes that I had. And one of them, she she was an atheist, and she said, I guess, I mean, I guess she, you know, she in witchcraft. And then the other one, I don't know. I don't, she, uh, she was like in the like the nature and the trees and all that stuff. So I guess that's what she had too. And all of that stuff was tormenting me for ever, for a long time. And I felt just during that time, I just was like, so that's when I wasn't coming to church. Mm-hmm. And I just felt like suicidal. I felt like God. And I, but I'm a punk, you know, because I I don't. First off, I know that I have a purpose, so I know that I have to be here to fulfill my purpose. And then I was like, I don't want to feel pain, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know, but I, I just, I was having suicidal thoughts and I was in that place of depression and uh, it just consumed me. And God, it was a miracle. I I just I 2000 at the beginning of 2022 I had like a few strokes and I had um tumors I mean not tumors uh blood clots blood clots in my heart and my lungs and my legs and in my brain and all of the doctors that I saw said I wasn't going to live, I wasn't going to live. Every one of them, all of them, and they would tell my parents, prepare for your, prepare for your daughter's death because it's the only way this is going to go. And my, my dad texted all my friends, I mean, some of them here, but he texted all my friends like, um, this is what's going on, Regina, da, 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 all this stuff. And, but it was a miracle, though, because I, I was so depressed that I was, my body went into a catatonic state. So that's like when I was, I was, I was there, but I wasn't there. Like I was aware, but my mind just was not, wasn't there. And, you know, I I, I had all these strokes and stuff like that. And I have seen all these doctors and I went through rehab and they thought I was never gonna talk again. They thought I was never gonna anything. And now, you know, I, I had to learn how to walk all over again, everything. And, but it was a miracle though, because the truth about it is, if that didn't happen, I'd still be in that place of like, yeah. spiritual, like, the, yes. Yes, I will still be there. And it happened, and I felt so. It was the first time in my life, not in my life, but it was the first time in a long time that I was able to actually rest and sleep and just without drama, without nightmares and t- night terrors. And I just could. It was, it was like he restored my peace. And I forgot what peace was. And, um, okay. And I, 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 wrong, I, I have to repent to you and to Pastor Corey because I was, I was, I was so like, I was so lost into what was going on. I was like trying to blame somebody for it, for for what was going on like like why is this happening to me like i you know it just <sighs> but i realized that it it wasn't it was me it was me i had i had all these open doors i had all these back and forth things and then that just like reopened doors and reopened it was just like it wasn't nobody to blame but myself. And now I'm in a season where God's been talking to me 
and he that's what he's been telling me like uh just recently he's been telling me you need to go back to church you need to get back there i've been told you that's where you need to be you need to get back there and you need to just keep showing up i'd be like god how am i gonna get to church how am i gonna get to church and then a few a few um a few um members they you know i connected to uh, dana and miss darlene and you know they're able to give me rides and stuff like that and i'm like just grateful and just thankful because like i need i need i need to be here i need to be here Father, we thank you for this gift. We thank you for what you've done in her life. And we thank you, Lord, that there is no turning back. I pray, Father, that you cover, keep her covered and protect her. Like you did for me when the enemy was after my mind, I thank you for doing the same thing for Regina. And I pray, Lord, that you would cause a mighty feeling that she will never, ever forget to come into her life today, even at this moment, in the name of Jesus. We just affirm her and thank you, Father, that you have saved her and that you are in the process of delivering her. And who the Son will make free is free indeed. I thank you, Lord, that every area of her life where there's been an open door, you give her the courage to shut. And you will bring her Father further than anybody in her family. I just established that today and released the fire of God upon her and even the Word of God. The word that says God is for you and even your former days, your former, the former things, forget the former things the Lord says. For I am doing a new thing in the life of Regina. So get ready for the new thing. Get ready. God's going to train you and teach you what it's like to be his daughter. And after he teaches you what it's like to be his daughter, I see you standing. Uh, like TED Talks telling people what God brought you through. There's going to be a level of proficiency that's going to come. And if you don't see it now, you look actually look down on yourself, but get ready because God's going to give you a boost of confidence. I see it like a booster in the spirit. I see it like an injection, a boost of confidence as you lean into the word. Get ready for the confidence of God to be your portion in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Bless the Lord for your daughter. I'm going to give you a personal deliverance session. Amen. Amen. You remember that song, fire, fire, fire. Fire fall on me. On the day of Pentecost, just like the day of yeah. sing it again. Fire, 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 fall on me. Just came up in my spirit. Say it with strength. Sing it, baby. That's for you. the story um. <laughs> so recently I feel like I've been struggling with letting go and letting go of worldly desires worldly desires like sexual sin and drinking and I've been struggling with fear because I know that once I let go, that my life is gonna change, that the people around me are gonna change, that I'm gonna change. And I'm afraid. And what are you afraid of? Just letting go and 
change. And I've been struggling with shame for, for things that I've done. And Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Last month, I went through something and I didn't share it with anybody except for one person. And I had an abortion. Come here, baby. to tell anybody. <laughs> I didn't even tell my mom. First, what does this necklace mean to you? Okay, take that off. Is it real? Can I put it in the trash? Don't wear anything like this, okay? All right. Look at me. God's going to free you from the shame today. What you did when you were in darkness doesn't carry over into your new life. Today, God's going to give you a new life. He's going to give you a new life. Look at me in my eyes. I had an abortion before I got saved, before I knew. So I know what this shame feels like. I know with the deep darkness that that goes into the pit of your soul that you can't seem to climb up out of, right? It's like it just overtakes you. Then one day, Jesus, he came and shined his light to my life. I had the awesome opportunity. Of knowing that what I did when I was in darkness wasn't held against me. Because I didn't know. Then I found out that my baby was with Jesus. Babies, because I had multiple abortions. My babies were with Jesus, and that when I go to heaven, I get to see my babies. It's all right, take a deep breath. The reason this is so important for you to know because God is going to break the torment off of your mind. It's coming upon you now like a wave. Say, Father, yeah. Before you, before, okay, look at me. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I accept you as Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord. I confess your Lordship in every area of my life. 
Thank you, Lord, for saving me. All right. Father, forgive me of every sin. You know them all. But today, I ask you to forgive me for murder. Yeah. But you know that there are murderers in the Bible that God used. Paul was a murderer. He was a murderer, and he wrote most of the New Testament. That's the power of redemption. The devil loves to oppress us. But there are records. There are, the Bible gives us, it gives us examples of the type of people that God wants to use. I want you to do something right here in front of everybody. Close your eyes. Say, Father, stretch your hands out like this. Hold your baby in your hand. There you go. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to give the baby to Jesus. Jesus is here. You feel him? Yeah. Just, just give the baby to Jesus. It's going to release you. Ah. <sighs> Come on, baby. Just give the baby to Jesus. Lift it up. Lift him up to him. He's ready to receive him. Come on. He's taking care of the baby now. Anybody else in here, if you feel that this is for you, you've had abortions, I want you to stand where you are. Something is about to break out. Yeah, now here it comes. Even if you are a man, and you were there or you are part of this narrative i want you to repent right where you are say father forgive me you got that baby come on i want you to if you're a woman lift it up right now and say father i surrender this baby to you because see the enemy wants to use it but you got to let him go he's in the arms of jesus now put him in his hand and just let him go let him go and you can rest your hand when you're finished, when you feel it, when you feel the release, rest your hand. You ready to let him go? Let it go now. Then drop your hands. There we go. Now I command the spirit of death to come out of her womb. I command that every across this entire room. Wherever there have been abortions, I command to rebuke the spirit of death. You can't seem to do anything. It's not prospering. But by the power of God. Hey, glory, glory, glory. Here it comes. Death, release your hold. Come out of her. Out of her womb. Now. The covenant with death is broken. Now. I call the darkness out of her. I call her out of that. Come on. I pull you up out of that pit. Every one of them out of that deep, dark pit in the name of Jesus. Out. Come out. Now. And I release the fire of the Holy Ghost upon her. Fill her. Fill her. Fill her. In the name of Jesus. I release joy and peace. Shah. Deleve Shata. I see it. I break this tormenting spirit, this spirit that's rehearsing, that's causing her to rethink every dark thing about her life. Be destroyed by the light of Jesus Christ. Let hope come into her body, into her mind, into her spirit. Get down and pray with her. For every one of you, every one of you, come on. Father, we thank you for your grace that's sufficient. Father, we thank you for your mercy that endures forever. Father, we thank you for the power of the blood. Somebody thank them. Thank them. I want you to know if you've had abortions, that your babies are with Jesus. They're being raised in heaven. I want you to know that when you murdered that baby, it was not the end. Jesus took them up. Somebody say thank you. It was in your ignorance. And God 
covers what we did outside of him. Aren't you grateful? Whoa. Whoa, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You deserve the glory and the honor. Sing to him. Sing it out, church. And the honor. Sing, y'all. Oh, you were great. God's healing some of your wounds. The enemy, as a result of your abortion, he tried to make you barren. I don't know who that's for, but there's healing coming to your wounds. There's healing coming to your wounds. Lay hands on your belly, come on. Some of you have fibroids as a result of those abortions. I pray now that the power of God will begin to heal, even for men. You've not seen, to some of, somebody in here almost seems like you couldn't, you can't keep a job like it's like nothing you put your hands to it prospers and it's the result of that abortion but because you repented today the spirit of death and abortion is broken off of everything that you put your hands to and now I'm getting ready for your season of prosperity for your season of prosperity for your season of prosperity I'm gonna do a session a deliverance session for people that have had abortions and miscarriages. I'm going to do it in the coming days, really, really soon. Really, really soon. Because I feel strongly that God's going to heal this house of sexual trauma, but he's also going to heal this house from the spirit of death that came through the doorway. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. How do you feel? Are you filled with the Holy Ghost? All right. You pray in tongues? Ask. Feel God. Here comes heat. There it comes. Holy Ghost, we feel you. Yeah. You want to pray in tongues? Are you afraid? Don't be afraid. You feel the presence of Jesus? All right. Father, we ask you to fill her now with evidence of praying, speaking in other tongues. Right now, in the name of Jesus, put fire on her. She cannot contain. Mahanda shata mahakatalama katalabahara bashanda lebekota la mahashata mahanda labahashata. If you feel it, I want you to just start praying, baby. Pray with her, Gianna. Give us your story. Who's next? So I just, can I face the church? You want to face you? Sure. Okay. What would you like to do? Um, I just came to testify because I believe that the Lord is going to heal me. And I think it's important that I share my story so that when he heals me, you can rejoice with me. I didn't want to ruin my makeup. Okay. It's over for that now. Um, thank you. Um, 
I was diagnosed, I don't know if a lot of people here know this, but um, I have moderate to severe hearing loss in both my ears. And I don't know if I was born like this, but my parents started to figure it out when I was like in fourth or fifth grade. I would like listen to the TV really loud or they would call me and I wouldn't hear them or I would slam doors and stuff like that. And so they took me to the doctor and I went to like a thousand appointments with like Children's Hospital and John Hopkins and everything. And the day that I was diagnosed, uh, my dad just sat in the room and he was weeping. And he was like, what's gonna happen to her? Like, how is she gonna, be? how is she gonna be normal? And the doctor was like, no, she's fine. Like, she can get a surgery or she can wear hearing aids or like, she's gonna be okay. And I remember her having to take my dad outside cause he didn't want, to, he didn't want me to see him crying. And so, they didn't opt for the surgery because there was a the chance that I could have went totally deaf if they got the surgery. So I, I wore hearing aids and I and I was okay with it. Like I wasn't like insecure or anything. And it that I thought that's what made me special, that I was part of hearing, which is like totally perverted. And um, I never knew that healing was an option though. I just thought like I'm just like I'm just gonna live like this forever and that's okay. And um, but despite that, God made me a singer, right? Like, isn't that so ironic? And my friends always joke, like, how can you not hear when somebody's talking to you, but you can hear when somebody's singing the wrong note? And I'm like, I don't know. I just can hear it. And so I got to college, and I learned that healing was an option for me. Like, it was something, not, even, not only that it was an option, but it was God's desire for me to be healed. And so I started to pursue him for my healing, and I went through some deliverance, and it was revealed that, this it's a curse and from my great grandfather up they're all in voodoo so it makes sense and it was revealed through deliverance that it's seven generations ago they saw me coming in the bloodline and they decided to curse me because they knew that I would I would be like a forerunner for my bloodline but it was also revealed through deliverance that my healing was going to be the sign of revival and so I started to pursue God for for him, but then also my healing because I, I'm, it was made known to me that it was an option. And um, I went through like ups and downs with my faith. Like one day I'm at the altar, I'm like, yes, Lord, like I believe you. And then the next day I'm like, well, you haven't done it yet, so maybe you're not gonna do it. And having to overcome the orphan spirit, because the orphan spirit tells you if you sin, he's not gonna heal you because you sinned. Or if you do something wrong, he's gonna take back his promise for what he said to you, which is a lie. And so I'd have moments where I was in, I was out, and um, in 2019, I went to a conference and I laid my hearing aids at the altar, and my hearing aids cost me $3,000. And so to leave that at an altar, at a random conference, random church, I don't know whose church this is, and it was the greatest sign of faith that I'd had, and up to that moment, I had been praying for the Lord to open up my ears, and I thought that he didn't hear me, when in reality, he opened up my spiritual ears, and I started to hear him as clear as day, and so that's how I knew he was the one that whispered to me, just leave these here, and so I'm on fire for God, right, like, yeah, I left my hand at the altar, my friends are hype, everybody hype, and then I go back to school, healing still not manifested in class, can't hear because I don't have my hearing aids. You're sitting in a lecture hall with 300 people and you ain't got your hearing aids on. School with my friends. Like I had to go through that. Oh, I can't hear. I can't hear. I can't hear. I had to go through that again. And I started to regret giving up my hearing aids. Like maybe I should have just kept them. Or maybe I, sh I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have worn them, but I would have kept them. Or maybe I would I would have just worn them in class. Or maybe. And then I just started to feel like the sign of faith that I had shown him, it was a mistake. Like he didn't tell you to leave them hearing aids at the altar especially if he wasn't gonna heal you that day. And so having to come overcome unbelief, like the spirit of unbelief. And there was a year where I vowed to never come to an altar call because I was embarrassed. I'm at the altar every week. Every time there's a, a, a moment for healing, I'm at the altar and my healing never manifests. And I'm watching the people around me have faith. And I've sitting at the altar like, I mean, if you do it, like you do, if you don't. There was one time, Apostle prayed for me and I was embarrassed. Like, I had wrapped my hair because my hair wasn't done and she snatched the thing off my head. And I was like this. 
And I sat, I sat oh in the God. corner. I was so salty. As soon as like grace and peace, I was just like, okay. And I ran out the door and Pastor Corey ran after me. And I had never like talked to him before that. He ran after me. He was like, it's going to be okay. Like, you're going to be okay. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. And so I've come out of that now. Thank you, Jesus. And so now I say all this to say, the Lord is going to heal me. Thank you, Jesus. And when he does, and y'all see me rolling on the floor and running laps around the sanctuary, you'll just know that there's, it's literally documented that I could not hear. Like I have hearing tests that said, this is the girl who could not hear. And he opened up my ears. Look at me. Say, Father. Father. Say, Father. Father. I break every vow. I break every vow. Everything. Everything that I've said. That I've said. In my ignorance. In my ignorance. Forgive me. Forgive me. Today. Today. I tie myself. I tie myself to the altar. To the altar. You were born for the altar. You were born for the altar. Yeah. And that's why the enemy wanted you to vow never to come back again. But today is the day. God's about to reveal another part of his plan for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord. Release our faith. Release it, church. Pray in the spirit. What you will do in her life will be uncommon. Never seen before in the kingdom of God. I thank you, Lord, for this revivalist. I thank you, Lord, for this preacher indeed. And I decree, Father, that even as she ties herself to the altar, you will perform something so great through her. Eyes have been seen, and neither has ears heard. But surely he has preserved you to shoot you forth like an arrow. Mark the days as you commit yourself to him. If he will not reveal secrets. Yeah. God says, I will break the sadness off of you. Even this depression that has come by way, coming through, even your sound. In the name of Jesus. Release the joy that surpasses all understanding. We give you glory. We give you honor and praise. Somebody celebrate. Amen. Hallelujah. You all believe for that? I believe with her. Come on. Celebrate. Celebrate. Hallelujah. Our destiny. Um, growing up, I struggled with... Um, I was abused and... I spoke up about it and I was not believed. And I allowed that to muzzle me and um, allow me to push me in a cave where I would not speak. I, I struggled with just normal conversations. I struggled with just knowing who I am. And then coming here last year, God began to tell me who I was. And then I found myself still in the cave because I was scared of coming out and stepping into what he has called me to be. And um, I wanted to say that I'm tired of being in that cave and I'm ready to come out. Yeah. Well, welcome, Destiny, to your new day. Hold her hand and walk her out of it. Walk her out of that cave. You're walking into a new season to a new day yeah the cave has lost its grip celebrate and thank god come on i said the cave has lost its grip father i thank you that you're putting people around her that won't let her settle in complacency and won't let her nurse her pain 
Release healing upon her in the name of Jesus. Man, dele undoshi leke vo shantala. Can the power of abuse is dismantled, is broken, the system of abuse. In the name of Jesus, I release fresh, a fresh wind, fresh, a fresh fire. Here it comes. Take a deep breath and breathe it in. Whoa. So fresh, fresh, fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost. Pray, baby. Come on, release it. Pray in the spirit. There we go. Here we go. Here we go. Katana Mandia Paul. Come on. There we go. Come on. Come on. The Bible says that you've been filled since you believed. Thank your God for the filling. Yeah. Power. Not just to come out, but to stay out. We break the power of regret off of you. Yeah. Of shame. Of confusion. All of that hiding. Thank you, Jesus. It's okay to be seen. Pray for work. Come on. Somebody celebrate. We're down to the last two. Hallelujah. Talk to us. So growing up um, as a young child, they go through a lot of emotional abuse between my mom and my stepdad. Um, moving currently forward, uh, I think we talked about me coming to Baltimore. I'm from Florida. I'm struggling with hearing God's voice. It got completely silent. And I feel like, you know, it's, it's my fault for doing that. And I have shame uh, and guilt with the kids since I can't see them every single day. Mm -hmm. So I'm coming just to repent for that. And and I feel like I'm no longer able to be used at all by God in any way or capacity. And all I, all I can do now is just sit here in a box somewhere. Mm -hmm. Well, God's not punishing you. Do you hear me? He's not punishing you. He's not punishing you. God's not angry with you. There is nothing you can do to make God withdraw his love from you. You are worthy of God's love because you're his son. And then Fakir's going to pray for you. And then we're going to celebrate your new day. I see that there was an attack on your mind. It was witchcraft sent against you by somebody that was very upset. Power of that is being broken today. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. You know who I'm talking about? No. Yeah. But it's going to break. That attack came on your mind suddenly. Seven months ago, he said. Seven months ago. And it was sent. When did you move? Okay. Your divorce, I see. Come on, I want, no, you don't need the mic. I want you to pray and labor with him. I want you to labor with him because I want you to break it once and for all. Take him to the side because I don't want you to whisper. I want you to go in. I release the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so I just have a quick testimony. It's not something I'm struggling with now. Is that okay? Okay. I'm going to turn this way. Um, so real fast, uh, I just wanted to share it so that it may encourage you, you all in the future. Um, so I dealt with lust um, and perversion for a while. Um, I've been free for two years. Let me just say that. But... <laughs> Thank you. 
But I didn't want to share it because I don't want to go back. So you know how the enemy be trying to, so I wanted to wait till I was married. But um, so, I like I said, um, masturbation, I, there, I liked it. And um, it was something I had used since my childhood to cope. So I had got deliverance multiple times. I mean, shaking and everything. The spirit was left me. But, be <laughs> but because it was the way I coped, I always went Bring back to it. Bring the musician some water. Oh, I always went back to it. Um, and so one day, um, I, I was going back to it because I was sad. And I, I kept hearing all these voices telling me, like, no, Janelle, no, don't do it, don't do it. But I did it anyway just because I just wanted to. And I literally saw a spirit like laying on top of me as, you know, I saw this spirit laying on top of me. And then immediately when I was done, um, I had like the spirit, I felt like the spirit of anxiety and insomnia like came over me to the point I couldn't even sit still. Like I would just shake and could not sit still. And so I would fast and pray to get this, you know, over with and done. And I would fast and pray and then it would be gone. But every time, it, it got to the point where every time I had sex, every time I masturbated, these spirits would come on me. I wouldn't be able to sleep, and I would have bad anxiety. And so um, eventually I just got tired of it. It got to the point where it's like, I'm not going to do this with you, and you go home, and you fine, but I'm at home tormented. And so it got to the point I was so tormented, I just had enough, and I decided I was not going to do it anymore. And that is kind of what has kept me all this time. But... I just wanted to say that um, keep crying out to God, like even if, God forbid, none of us go back, but even still just keep crying out to God because he knows your heart and he, he will deliver you some kind of way. Even if you got to go through the torment and the pain, you will get free some kind of way. And so like I'm saying, I'm two years free and I plan to stay free. So yeah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. Let's just pray for a moment. We're going to see what the Lord, if we're going to end, we're going to end it high. Amen. Come on, pray. I know you're tired, but the Lord told me last week. There's a lot of moving in the back, just for a moment. He told me last week. He showed me what was coming to this church. I was not surprised that people started testifying to that. But he said, condition the people. Because this is... A house of revival. This is not something, no catch thing for me. I've been praying for this for years. Now, we've experienced it over time. Community center, we came into this building, and it will come up and, and die down. But this time, we're going to carry it. But he said, I want you to condition the people. He let me know. He said, it started really when I told them to kill the clock. But I was in a wrestle with the clock. But when I told them to kill the clock and turn the lights on, that was a shift for this house. Because what the enemy wanted us to do, they called it sexy church. <laughs> he wanted us to do is to be, to be so conditioned that by his way, that when God wanted to have a move like this, we would cut it off and people would remain in bondage. But what God is doing in this house, it will not be able to be contained. And it will be stewarded through a people who learn the power of transparency, who know the power of repentance, who know the power of being hungry. A house that is hungry cannot be denied of the power of God because he will always answer the hungry. A house that is thirsty will never be denied of the power of God because he said he looks for the thirsty. He that hungers and thirsts after righteousness, after God will be filled. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to him and we're going to praise. First of all, I want you to tell him thank you. Before you start clapping, tell him thank you for what he's done. Thank you for what he did this day. Thank you for the lives that has been transformed in this house. But thank you for the generations that will be set on fire because of what happened in this house. Before Jesus Christ returned, he's going to have himself a church. Yeah, he's going to have himself a people. Yeah, that are ready. Yes, that are ready. That are ready. Come on, open your mouth and begin to cry out unto the king. 
Cry out unto the King. Cry out unto the King. Father, we thank you for the fire and for your presence that you've released in this house. We thank you for the power. Come on. We thank you for the spirit of revival. We thank you that revival is here. We thank you that we are the earth and we shall yield. We shall give you the glory. We shall give you the honor that you deserve. Father, from today forth, we ask you, we give you permission to take our entire life and do what you will with it. Some of your lives are about to be turned upside down and it will be for the glory of God and it will be in the presence of community because God called none of us to be an island but you're going to see the power of community in these days as we gather the corporate anointing the corporate anointing that he's going to release shall not be compared to anything that we've ever experienced but the day is here where the earth and heaven will collide where the power of the living God is coming down from heaven come on there is a portal that I stood in where John the Baptist stood in there was a portal that I stood in where Jesus stood when I was in the Holy Land. And it was clear to me that God had given me access to something new, to something unusual. In the name of Jesus, this house, you feel it, is a New Testament house. And the same power that I encountered, I release it upon you. I release it upon you. I release it upon you. I release it. Hey, I release it upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus come on in here pray in the spirit for a moment pray in the spirit for a moment for some of you it would not be a feeling but you'll see a new authority you'll see a fresh authority it's going to come upon you in the name of Jesus there was a boldness that is coming even upon this house to evangelize a boldness that is coming even upon this house to preach the good news I see people rising to preach the good news the good news the message of the good news is upon you it's in your belly it shall come from your lips where the enemy has caused you to close your mouth it's broken today in the name of Jesus you feel it let the good news burst even from your pores let the power of the gospel be upon you you will preach and you will preach on the corners and you're going to preach on the campuses and I'm not talking about going to gather a logo I'm not talking about going to make a ministry but I'm talking about the power that's going to be released to you that will not be contained when you open your mouth to communicate and say what Jesus has done for you what he has done for the world there's going to be a power upon it let people be saved by the thousands because of the message that you will communicate in the name of Jesus as a result of your story as a result of your testimony oh God God I release fresh fire on it on your testimony boldness 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 in the name of Jesus let the gifts of the spirit awaken whoa 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 some of you feeling burning burning tingling you're feeling activation you're feeling it that's it bring her to me you're feeling it come on if you feel it I want you to begin to lean into it whoa some of your hands are on fire right now your hands are on fire your hands are on fire hey, that's it hey whoa Hey, come on, come on, come on. You feel it? You feel it? God's going to deal. The reason some of you had to confess because there was so much shame and condemnation that you did not, you weren't able to distinguish the voice of God, but his voice will be clearer. There's a Christmas that is coming to his voice. He's going Woo you into a deeper relationship with him to use you for his glory. 
Say, I want it. Come here. I want it. Say, I want it. Usher them into purity. Usher them into purity. Usher them into praying power. Mahadalabakataya. Shay. The message on your lips, uh, oh my God, uh, is raw, uh, is powerful. Uh, usher them in uh, to the glory of God. That's why the enemy wanted to assault you. Uh, he wanted to bring you out of a right mind uh, so that God couldn't use you. Uh, uh, but it's on you, baby. Uh, you can't deny it. Uh, you can't deny it. Uh, you can't deny it. Oh, uh, you can't fire. Right? Hey. Jesus Father Father what you want from God what you want baby ask him for it right now Ask him for it right now. Right now. God comes to meet your desire. He comes to meet your desire. Whatever you want, ask him for it right now. Come on. I hear your heart. You say, God, I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you. There's a level of revelation that is coming to you. When you open your word this week, the words will leap from the page. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, they will leap from the page. And the Lord says, oh yes, because of your yes, in this season there is a great reward that is coming. I see a promotion coming. I see a promotion. I see a promotion. I see a promotion. Yeah, I see it. God says, happy birthday. This promotion, oh yes, oh yes. That was a recent conversation with the God, with God, with the Lord. A recent conversation where you made God some promises. The Lord wants you to know I heard you. I heard you. Great grace for this new year. Great grace. Great grace. The spirit of restoration is coming upon families. Revival, restoration. 